Hello. Hey, good morning. Afternoon. How are you? Evening. Uh, One wanna, of those times. Yeah, I wanted to see if I could uh, possibly be co-host so we could record this for the channel. I will see if I can promote you. Hang on just a second. Um, How are you, by the way? Sorry. I'm fine, Mike. Thanks. Make co-host. You are a co-host. Thank you. Pam, would you like to be a co-host? Why not? Pam is a co-host. You can be a co-host. You can be a co- That's right, my best, um, Oprah. Well, Polaji is promoted to co-host, or is, is a panelist, excuse me. Oops, we are recording at the moment. <clears throat> I'm to pause just for a second. I almost feel like an NPR radio host. Pam, if you have a um, text number for our absent, uh, yes, I have board members. Two of them. Um, Reggie's having. He's going to switch to another computer. Craig has not answered me, and I'm checking my email. I do not see any other. No, because I heard from some of them today, so. Oh, come on. I see Mr. Pino, and I'm promoting him. Mr. Chairman, I believe we now have quorum with three people. I believe we do. Um, well, we I wait? can't pick up my email on my new phone. Uh, should we wait, uh, Mr. May, should we wait maybe one or two more minutes for, uh, generally, uh, Larry is pretty dependable if he's not able to attend. He There's usually... Reggie. Oh. Here we go. And Larry may be, let's give Larry one or two more minutes. He shows the, uh, Pretty dependable. If he doesn't show, he usually uh, notifies ahead. Um, Larry, if you are using an alias, if you could raise your hand, I can unmute you or promote you to panelist. Sometimes we use our kids. There he is. Full house, Mr. Chairman. Now we have him. See that? Oh, wait a minute. I lost my, oh, there they are. Okay. Good evening. Good evening. Mr. Chairman, you may begin One, with your two. opening statement. Yes, sir. All right. Well, good evening to everyone. Uh, this is a prepared opening statement that I'm about to read. I'm calling this October the 6th, 2020 meeting of the Brockton Planning Board to order. My name is Bob Pelagi and I am the chair of the board. This meeting is being recorded in accordance with the governor's order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general law, chapter 30A, I guess section 20, relating to the 2020 novel corona outbreak emergency. The October 6, 2020 public meeting of the Brockton Planning Board shall be physically closed to the public 
to avoid group congregation. Real-time public participation and comment can be addressed to the board, to the planning board utilizing the Zoom virtual meeting software for remote access. This application will allow users to view the meeting and send a comment or question to the chair via the question and answer function. Submitted text comments will be read into the record at the appropriate points in the meeting. For those of you joining our, us by phone who want to ask a question, press star nine to raise your hand. A copy of the recording and transcript will be posted to the city's uh, webpage within 72 hours. All votes will be done via a roll call to ensure count accuracy. A quorum call, board members, please respond in the affirmative to indicate your attendance at this meeting. Bob Pelagi, here. Craig Pina. Here. Reggie Thomas. Here. Tony Gonzalez. Here. Larry Hassan. Here. With five members voting in the affirmative, I declare that we have a we have a, a, a quorum. I should say voting in attendance. Uh, again, once again, this meeting is being recorded. Okay, let's just quickly go down the elements of tonight's uh, public hearing or zoning board, uh, planning board meeting. The first agenda item is a permission to return to the zoning board of appeals. It's properly at 912 Crescent Street. Uh, it was denied on July the 14th, 2020. The applicant is KG Collectives. Second agenda item is permission to return to the Zoning Board of Appeals. It's property at 1208 Montello Street. The denial was February the 11th of 2020. The applicant was uh, Peter Harrison and the representative is JK Holmgren Engineering. Uh, the third agenda item is site plan approval. That's property at 702 North Montello Street. The applicant is Carousel LLC. It's a retail marijuana proposal. Representative is Ian Woods. Uh, the fourth agenda item is a preliminary subdivision. It's a six lot residential subdivision at 134 Armiston Street. The owner representative is, let's see, the owner is Robert Keane and the representative is attorney James Burke. I've been informed that that has been continued. Fifth agenda item is a preliminary subdivision. It's a two lot residential subdivision. Uh, that 74 plots, 18 market in Market Street in one plot, plot one minus four Copeland Street. It's one uh, Troches, I believe, is the applicant, and Land Surveys is the representative. And the sixth agenda item is a an eight, 18 lot residential definitive subdivision. Property is on map 37. It's plots four, six, and 18 Augusta Avenue in plot 36 Prospect Street. The owner is Frederick Kepsi and the representative is Curly and Hanson Surveyors. Seventh agenda item is a definitive subdivision, a two lot residential subdivision at 678 E Street. Uh, let's see, owner is Benjamin Carroll and the uh, engineer is Munden, the engineer is Munden Engineering. That, has, that item has been continued to November the 4th, 2020. Last agenda item is a definitive subdivision. It's a four lot residential subdivision in plot two by Gravia Avenue. The owner representative is Silva Engineering. That also is, that has been continued to the December of the first 2020 meeting. All right. Well, without further ado, uh, again, first agenda item. I'm, I'm sorry, one, one sorry. point of order, Mr. Chairman. Um, Yes. I do want to point out that the 134 Armistead Street subdivision, preliminary subdivision, is continued to November 4th. You were oh, given the you. dates on the other two continuances, but you didn't give the date on that one. So for All those right. of you who are applying at home, um, November 4th. Thank, Thank you. you sir. Thank you, Mr. May. Continue to no November 4th. Anyone who is here to speak on uh, KG Collectives return to ZBA. Could you please raise your hand so that I can um, unmute you? Do you want to do the minutes at the end of the meeting? Well, we've got acceptance of minutes. We should probably, I think we should probably, uh, we should probably do that now. Let's do it now. Motion to accept the minutes as presented. 
I'll say that. First of all, is there, are there any comments or any, any comments or recommendations or changes? <laughs> no. Okay, so we have a motion to accept. Is there a second? I second that. All in favor of all in favor of accepting the minutes of the meeting of uh, I guess that was what? Nine two twenty. October the September second. Oh September the second. Thank you. That was I scratched it out. I'm sorry. I scratched it out. Uh, so there's been a motion made and seconded. Roll call vote. Uh, Craig Pina? Uh, yes. Reggie Thomas? Yes. Tony Gonzalez? Yes. Larry Hassan? Yes. Bob Pelagi is a yes. Minutes have been approved. And then you want to, you've got, what do you, what do you have, Pam, for housekeeping items there? You've got? I have nothing. Nothing. I like it. Yep. I have nothing. Wonderful. So we're going to move right into the first agenda item, which is return to the ZBA 912 Present Street. So do you have some, I guess you have some respondents on uh, on that, Mr. May? Uh, yes, Mr. Pierce has been uh, moved up to a panelist. If there's anybody else here to speak about uh, KG Collective, whether um, you're speaking for or against uh, or making a presentation, that's 912 Crescent Street. Please raise your hand. Thank you, Mark. I will promote you. And Michael or uh, Marcus, I don't know who is leading your presentation, but um, one of you has the floor. Oh, sorry. Uh, I'll be leading the presentation. Um, I want to say uh, good evening to everyone. Uh, good evening to members of the board. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to reappear before you this evening. I'm here with uh, my partner, uh, Marcus Johnson Smith. <clears throat> um, as, you were, as you were aware, we had our zoning meeting on July 14th. Uh, we were denied by the board um, because of some missing documentation, such as a host agreement, a butters letter, a butters notice, um, and also the security plan. And they also cited some necessary changes to our site plan as well as the context map. Um, as you recall, we were here last month in front of the board. Uh, we submitted uh, most of those documentations, but the site plan and also the context plan was in question. Um, we've made the substantial changes. Uh, we've met with Tech Review. Um, they gave us some positive feedback of what we needed to do. Um, we submitted updated uh, context map as well as our site plan with our resubmission application um, uh, last month. Um, sure you had the chance to review those documents. Uh, if you have them before you, uh, I would love to walk you through some of the changes. Um, if you have the context map, um, what was missing on the context map was a 500 foot radius. Uh, we've added that to the context map as well as the 1000 foot radius circle. Uh, more, more so the changes that were highlighted or necessary were on the site plan. Uh, on the site plan, if you can turn to that document, please. Uh, we removed uh, all of the parking spaces that were in question uh, along Hope Street. Mr. They Pierce, if I can interrupt for just a second, I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to first share the context map. Um, awesome. So, hopefully that is now sharing. So uh, you can see there, that's our site with the blue uh, shaded area. Uh, it's 912 Crescent Street. And what we were missing in our initial submission was the 500 foot uh, radius and our surveyor uh, added that to our uh, context map in our, our new submission. And the, the gray areas are also the, uh, the other commercial spaces, but that was the change. And this is the, uh, the site plan, the most recent copy. Um, our survey made some changes. There were spaces along Hope Street on the left side there. Um, there were several parking spaces that were in question. We removed those spaces and filled it with some uh, landscape area. Um, there was also some areas in front of the building that we uh, added some more landscaping. As you can see, there was much more uh, landscaping to this site plan. I think it exceeds the requirement by nearly 30%. 
Um, we also added a loading area in the back of the building uh, next to parking spaces one and two. Um, the loading area will be designated for deliveries. Uh, we also added another dumpster in the rear of the building near parking space number nine. Um, so we have our own dumpster and then the restaurant has their own dumpster. Um, these are all um, per suggestions uh, uh, from our tech review meeting as well. And lastly, we added a six foot solid fence along the perimeter of the property, the rear, as well as the right uh, side of the property. Um, and those were the changes that were you know, required um, from the zoning board as well as tech review. And we feel as though those are substantial changes. Um, my partner and I would just you know, respectfully ask for another chance to go in front of the zoning board. We have all the documentations that were, documents that were uh, missing or in question. Um, we're ready to give it another shot, and right, we're here this evening. Uh, thank you. If anyone has any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them. Any comments on the part of the board? I don't have any particular comments. I think this has been in front of us a couple of times, and it looks like they've done everything they've been asked to do. I. I mean, I wish them the best when they go back to ZBA. I don't really have any other, I don't have any questions. Well, I was the, I was the lone dissenter at the last meeting. Uh, and, and, I, and I used as my guide the, um, the notes and the, the decision that was written by the Zoning Board of Appeals. And it looks to me as though you've addressed those, sir. The only thing is, um, <clears throat> there, was a, some, there, was some, there was a vague reference in the, um, in, in, in the, in the, Zoning board's decision. It says various parking issues. I'm not going to belabor that. If you if you feel comfortable that you've addressed those issues, then so be it. But it looks to me as though you've made some substantial changes. You've 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 uh, you know you've improved the context map and you've revised your site plan. So I don't have any further issues with it. Yeah, personally, I didn't. I don't see any issues. I didn't see any issues with the. Uh, the previous proposal from last month and I don't um, I don't see any issues with it now. Okay, is there is there if that's uh, completes the discussion on the part of the board, is there is there a motion? Motion approve. I second that motion. Okay, there's been a motion made and seconded to approve the uh yes you're motioning to, to allow them to return to the yes motion motion to return to ZBA. Yes. Motion made and seconded. Okay, so uh, um, Mr. Chairman, I'm sorry, I just got a chat message in here um, from a person identifying themselves as 2.0, which uh, doesn't tell me who that is. Um, and I don't see that person as an attendee. Do so I can't to, unlock do, them. Do they need to identify themselves? Uh, yes, but I don't know who they are to unlock themselves. So if uh, the person who wrote opposed this um, could identify themselves, I'd like to be able to get you on the record. Is it, is it a technical issue, Mr. May? Um, I think they're logged in. They're logged in, but their screen name says it's uh, 2.0. And so I don't, ah, there's a 2.0. Let me unmute you. If you would like to testify. Um, I, me... They need to identify themselves. <laughs> yes. So 2.0. Um, if you want to turn on your camera or um, unlock your microphone, you may do so now and provide your name and address, please. Well, we will continue to work on that. Um, oh, it says Jason Reed Hall is the name and opposed. It's in the chat um, feature. So 
Oh, Jason Reed, Hall Street. Hall Street Reed. is opposed. Is that is that his only correspondence, Mr. May? Uh, at the moment, yes. He's driving. Oh, shame on you. <laughs> oh, yes, please be careful, Mr. Reed. And so, so that you understand, we're just approving for this applicant to return to the zoning board. That's correct. So he'll have another opportunity at the zoning board. I mean, we're more than willing to hear his comments, but um, he is te technologically unable to to make those. <clears throat> ZB said no because parking security and. Okay, so apparently he didn't hear, he didn't hear the he didn't hear the the, the applicant's uh, comments or uh, follow up comments because those things have been addressed. Yes, I believe there was a motion on the floor, Mr. Palaji. That is correct, sir. I mean, can we can we record him in opposition and then move on? I did. Uh, we, we, we are, yes. He's saying the applicant did not submit the right papers and it's not a substantial change. Well, we reserve the right to make that judgment. Mr. Chair, I just make a comment because I just read his chat too. Um, I'm not sure what plan Mr. Reed is looking at because the updated plan makes sense now. Yeah, there was a, so so there was a prior plan because I know there was some parking that I had made comments on a while back that was on the side, which was on Hope Street, which is now been redesigned on the plan. So yes, yeah, he had, he had some. It's a missing information on the contact plan that he had made. We made some substantial changes and improvements on the site plan. So I don't know if this person has had a chance to see the new updated plan, but we have it. Yeah. Mr. Thank May, in your opinion, the ZBA is still on the floor. Mr. May, in your opinion, can we move forward? Uh, yes, we have his, um, we have Mr. Reed's comments. Very good. So noted. Okay. We have, we have a motion and a second to approve the return to the Zoning Board of Appeals as requested. On the roll call vote, Craig Pina. Yes. Reggie Thomas. Yes. Tony Gonzalez. Yes. Larry Hassan. Yes. Bob Pelagi is a yes. Okay. So thank you to KG Collectors. Thank you very much, uh, members of the board. We appreciate you. Thank you. Thank we'll you. let the zoning board know. Okay, thank you. All right, second agenda items. Commissioner return to the zoning board of appeal properties at 1208 Montello Street. The denial was February the 11th of 2020. Applicant is Peter Harrison and the, the uh, representative is JK Holmgren Engineering. Would those people who are here for this, Mr. U. Scott, um, offering testimony for a return to ZBA at 1208 Montello Street. Um, please raise your hand so I can promote you into the panelist section. And that is all the raised hands, sir. All right, uh, I, so Scott is not, I see his name there, but he is not, um, Joined the, he has not joined the meeting then? No, he oh. has his, his camera is off. I'm here, Mr. Chairman. All right. Are you in the witness protection program, sir? No, I'm, I'm just, this is all way over my head. Um, you, just, you just can't see his matching headphones like, like Rob has. <laughs> oh, I see. I was thinking <laughs> the same thing. But as long as you can hear me, you don't need to see me, Mr. Chairman. All right. Well, I mean, it's always uh, very good. Okay, so let's get, would you like to make a presentation, Mr. Ferrier? There we go. All right, I have to find this. <laughs> there he is. Technical support. Hey, Bob. Hi there, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm wonderful, thank you. Great Long to see you. Long time no see. All right, all right, let's. 
Let's keep it there. All right. So, uh, Mr. Chairman, Scott Farrier from J.K. Holmgren, uh, representing Peter Harrison. As you said, we were before the Board of Appeals back in February for a proposal at 1208 Montello Street, uh, right at the corner of Montello and Riverside. And what we had before the ZBA was a 32-unit, four-story building uh, that had 24 parking spaces. Uh, of those 24 spaces, we had, uh, actually we had 32 spaces, 24 of them were on the ground, eight of them were what we were calling tandem spaces. Uh, the Board of Appeals wasn't really happy with that. They were uh, really just considering the proposal for having 24 spaces on the ground level of the building. Uh, there was also concern about the height of the building. Uh, so as I said, that was 32 units. So we since revised the plan. The proposal you have before you tonight has three stories, 24 units in the 24 spaces. So one space per unit. So we feel like we've uh, addressed a couple of those concerns, one being the height of the building, two being the parking issue that the ZBA specifically mentioned in their decision. Uh, the one other notable change that this plan has is because of the uh, elimination of those eight tandem spaces that we had, uh, we now have more green space on the south side uh, of the building. Uh, it's still tight to Riverside, but uh, the side opposite Riverside right there exactly, uh, we have a much larger landscaped area, uh, which provides us a uh, opportunity to give a little more buffering uh, to the neighbors. So uh, hopefully we've done the best we could on this. I think we've addressed the ZBA's concerns and we're just hoping you'll give us a chance to get back before them in the near future, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. I, I had one quick question. So in reducing the number of units, I guess it is what, from 32 to 24? Yeah, we literally lopped off one story. They were eight units per story. So we got rid of the uh, the fourth story. Now it's a three-story building. Okay. Well, that's, that's certainly a significant change. But does that change allow you to be parking compliant now or are you still looking for re relief from parking? Now we're at one-to-one, -one, Mr. Chairman. So you're one-to-one. -one. Yeah. yeah. Before uh, we were at 0.75 to one, I guess. Is this, is this a 40R project? No, it is not. Okay, so what, what guides us, Mr. May? I'm just wondering, what guides what guides the parking ratio? Is it the, is it the Brockton Ordinance? Uh, Yes, sir. The Brockton Ordinance would um, guide parking on this, and I believe that is part of their application to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Yeah, you'd need, you'd need, I would say, slight, you'll need slight relief for parking. Right, exactly. Yeah, okay. Um, that's all the comments I had. Uh, board members, any other, anybody else have any other comments or input? I would just say, as as a, the, the planning board representative of the ZBA, the, the whole the whole tandem parking issue was the main issue that uh, the chairman of that board um, didn't quite agree with. And I think this is a substantial change and uh, it, it warrants a return to ZBA. Thank you. Very good. Anybody else have a comment? All right, hearing none. Um, that note, I'd like to make a motion for permission to return to the zoning board, 1208 Montello Street. Hang on just one second. I'm not paused. Um, I wanted to make sure um, we had uh, the ward counselor had a chance to speak if she would like to, and also the state rep, uh, Ms. Dubois, is in the room. And um, if we want, uh, if she had any um, comments, um, I think I'll I just moved first. her up. Rep Dubois, how about I'll go first? Sounds great. Certainly. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. It's Susan Nicastro, Ward 4 City Councilor. Um, it does appear to me to be a substantial change. I'm happy for the reduction in units and, and um, closer to the number of parking spaces. And I just want to gently remind you that pursuant to MGL 40A section 16, planning board has to make specific findings on a return to zoning matter. And it's actually listed on one of the pages of your application. So um, I would just hate for this to be found to be defective because you didn't make those findings. Thank you very much. Okay. 
All right. Is there anyone else who would like to speak either in favor or in opposition? Mr. Chairman, while we have a brief pause here um, with the motion on the floor, you may want to consider um, rephrasing that motion to include the findings uh, that you had mentioned earlier. Oh, I forgot. Now, who is it that made Tony? Did Tony make the original motion? Yes, okay. sir. All right. So you might want to incorporate into the into your motion that there was a that there was a substantial reduction in density, and there was also modifications to parking. Oh, okay. Please add what uh, the chairman just said, please. When I say I say modifications, I mean improvements to parking. The modification approved to the parking. Got it. Substantial reduction in density. Thank you, Pam. Okay, and so we did. We had a motion, and then I didn't. I didn't hear a second. Was there a second? I'll second that motion. All right. So we've got a we've got a motion and a second um, to to uh, for site plan approval for 702 uh, Academy for. Um, uh, oh, oh, only Board of Appeals for 1208 Montello Street. On the roll call vote, Craig Pina. Did yes. Okay. Reggie Thomas. Yes. Tony Gonzalez. Yes. Larry Hassan. Yes. Bob Pelagi is a yes. Okay, very good. Uh, agenda item number three. Um, Folks, good night. Thank you. Have a good evening. Okay, agenda item number three is site plan approval of properties at 702 North Montello Street. The applicant is Terrasol LLC. It's a retail marijuana establishment. Representative is Ian Woods. Good evening, sir. Is there a representative for that project? Ian uh, is here. Hang on just a second. I am promoting people. Mr. Woods, promote the panelists. Uh, are there any other attendees wishing to speak on this project? Uh, if you could raise your hand and I will promote you all. Seeing none at this time, Mr. Chairman, the call is yours. All right, thank you. Uh, good evening. So, Ian Woods, I, you are on. Uh, you are on, and uh, we would we would welcome your comments on the on your application. Good evening. Uh, good evening, everybody, um, members of the planning board. This is an application for a site plan review for 702 North Montello Street. My name is Ian Woods. I'm a Brocktonian and a social equity applicant. I am a local businessman and have a 60% interest in the company. And my partner, Milton Naziopoulos, is another Brockton and a local business owner whose company has a 40% share. We have secured funding from local banks and financial companies in order to fund the establishment of this business, including the renovation of the existing structure. We will be enhancing the green space with a few low height plantings per CCC regulation. Um, as you can see by the context map and engineer's letters, there are no schools or retail establishments within 500 feet of the property. This proposal is to convert the existing three business retail location into a single retail marijuana store. Our target audience will be the commuters and residents that live within 500 yards of the store. We anticipate that a majority of the clients will use our state of the art app to order the product and then come to the location just to pick it up. As you can see on the plans as well, uh, there are no changes to the existing site plan conditions. The only exterior changes will be to the window and door openings. Um, Mr. Wood? Yes, sir. I, I apologize for interrupting you. I am uh, 
attempting to share your application with the screen, I now have the um, context map up. So you can see that we're at North Montello and um, is that Ames Street? Yes. Okay. And now I will go to the drawings of the building. And then the architectural drawings. Here are the elevations you were just speaking about, removing the garage door, the drive-in door. Yes, sir. Which is here on the um, south-facing elevation. I'm sorry for the interruption. You may go ahead. Oh, no problem. Thank you again for actually explaining that. Um, so, You're welcome. yes, the only exterior changes will be to that um, door and the windows. Um, we are required to have one parking spot per 250 square feet, which is four parking spots. We have five, which will remain as they are. Um, that's all we have to present tonight. I just wanna thank the board members for the time tonight, and I'll be happy to answer any questions. All right, well, thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Woods. Um, Okay, so you've been, you, you were before, this project was before tech review? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, th there's a couple of concerns that the, that the board has. Um, I wasn't at that meeting to be in the interest of full disclosure. I wasn't at that meeting, but did you, did you provide some sort of a traffic analysis? Is that, is that a requirement of the, of the application? Yes, we did. Okay, and was that, uh, was that reviewed by engineering? Do you know, can you help me with that? Either Pam or Rob, was that approved by, was that reviewed by a traffic or by uh, engineering? It was reviewed by engineering and zoning. And then I, I, I'm getting this second hand, so please excuse me, but there, there were some concerns about the traffic analysis. There were concerns about parking, uh, employee parking, um, and so I'm wondering, in, in doing your in, in doing your parking analysis, are you um, is it, did you take your parking out your parking requirements from the city of Brockton ordinance? Yes, sir. So that so in other words, you took your net you took your net retail space, uh, and that and that generated the the uh, requirement of four four parking spaces. You said. Yes, sir. How many employees would you have at any given time? Or, or rather, what's the what's the maximum number of employees that you'll have at any one time? Uh, three to five, and they'll be parking offsite. So you've got you've so you've got some dedicated parking. <coughs> yes, uh, lease location. Did you did you provide evidence of that, sir? Yes. Yes. Okay, so you provided evidence of your lease parking at the at the site plan approval meeting. Correct. Okay. And zoning as well. All right. I wasn't can aware. I can I mention that all these questions, the parking questions, have been asked and answered at in zoning. Okay, I was not aware of that, uh, Mr. Pina. I wasn't at that meeting. And then um, I've been informed that you still have some some um, unaddressed uh, property taxes on the site. No, they were paid. Oh, they were. Um, yes, sir. Can you get us a receipt showing that the 2019 taxes? Yes, we'll have it for you tomorrow. Because that's what's showing as owed. Correct. Not current yes. ones. It was paid three weeks ago on um, August 1st. Okay, well, that probably should have come to us. It definitely should have come to us. Okay, and so does his explanation, both Pam and Rob, <laughs> does his explanation for the concerns for parking, has that now been satisfied? I mean, he's got, he has a dedicated uh, offsite commitment for, for employee parking. 
I was not at the zoning board meeting and I was not at the site plan, the site plan review meeting. So I, I believe, I believe Mr. Pina did answer that. Okay. Yeah, as far as, as far as uh, the, all the questions from the zoning board, all the parking questions were asked and answered that, and, and it was, it was approved. Very good. Well, does anybody else on the planning board have any further comments, questions, comments, concerns? Is there anybody from the public, this is being a public hearing, is there anybody from the public that, what, that would like to speak either in favor or in opposition to this site plan, site plan application? And again, if anybody... Uh, yes? Um, hello, um, Rob May. This is uh, State Representative Michelle Dubois. I just wanted uh, 6 Bank Street, Brockton, Mass. I just wanted to be registered in support of Mr. Wood's application um, here tonight. And I thank you very much for the opportunity to um, weigh in with my support. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other attendees on board who would like to um, please raise your hand so I can promote you to a uh, active role? I have a chat just opened up. Hello. From Spink Engineering. To all panelists, this would be a good. Uh, this would be good for our neighborhood neighbors, and our neighborhood. So, oh, hello, uh, Spink I'm Engineering. Sorry. If you could tell me what your actual name is, we would and address, we would appreciate that. They are the engineers for this project. They're the engineers, Rob. Ah, well, that's. So I'd be surprised if they were a little a little biased. Yeah, it might, but you could be opposed, but I doubt it. Can you unshare your screen? Thank you. Okay. Any other comments that you see, Mr. May? Hello? Yes. Sorry, um, can you guys hear me or see me? Yes, we can hear, hear you and see you. Oh, sorry. I'm so sorry to interrupt. I don't know if I'm in the... Uh... Uh, um, in the right spot or not? I live off uh, um, or off Earl Street. Is this the the meeting to discuss the new development that was supposed to happen there? No, I think no, no, not yet. Not no. Oh, so we haven't discussed it yet. Uh, which project on Pearl are you are you talking about? Earl. Oh, Earl. Earl you you want the head sheet project? Oh, the head sheet. Okay, no, that's uh, further on down. That's agenda item number six. Oh, because you haven't discussed it yet. Okay, sorry. Nope. Thank you. I just got okay. here. Sorry. What am I? Thank you. Let me. All right. Okay. So, do you do you have anybody else that, that wants to be recognized, Mr. May? He's muted. I don't see anybody else. That's. Oh, I'm sorry. No more hands up. Motion to approve. Okay. Um, there are standard conditions that come with these. So I ask when you make the motion, you make the motion that it includes the standard with approval the motion, conditions. With the standard conditions. I'll second that motion. Okay. A motion has been made with second conditions, with, with, uh, with conditions, and, and a second has been made. Um, now for the roll call vote. Uh, Craig Pina. Yes. Reggie Thomas. Yes. Tony Gonzalez. Yes. Larry Hassan. Yes. Bob Pelagi is a yes. Thank you for All right, thank you. support. Thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you. board members. Okay. Uh, Again, for the record, uh, agenda item number four is a preliminary subdivision, 134 Amis, Amiston Street, six lot residential subdivision. That's Robert Kane and, and attorney James Burke. That has been continued to November the 4th. Next item is preliminary subdivision properties at Map 74 plots 18 Market and 1 minus 4 Copeland Street. It's a two lot residential subdivision, Juan uh, Torches. Uh, is the applicant, owner applicant, and land surveys is the uh, representative. Uh, would 
those presenting and wanting to testify, please raise your hand so I can promote you. Mr. Malcolm and who else did I just come out? Ah, John, yes. And is Todd filling in on this also? Or is that, did I get him by mistake? No, Todd is the um, last item. Todd is the last item. Sorry, Todd, I'm going to demote you for a second. So we should have Mr. Malcolm and uh, Mr. McCluskey, Attorney McCluskey, excuse me, sir. Uh, yeah, Mr. McCluskey and Mr. Malcolm are both muted. <clears throat> there we go. I just unmuted myself. And I'm going to Thank share the site plan if you don't mind. Is Bruce uh, on? He is, but he's muted. He hasn't unmuted his mic. Okay. Hello? What the heck? Oh. Rob, can you unshare that for a minute? Yes, ma'am. When you did that, it wiped out what I was doing. I apologize. I know. Okay. <clears throat> I can, I guess. Uh, Mr. Malcolm or Attorney McCluskey, who's leading this presentation? So it uh, sounds like Bruce isn't on yet. Um, let me just give him a quick call and tell him to unmute. He's unmuted. He is unmuted. Yeah. Oh, he is. Yeah, he's just uh, not talking. Oh, okay. okay. I'm here. Oh, good. So uh, you ready for us? Yes. All right. So thank you, um, John McCuskey representing the applicant. This is for a preliminary subdivision for the purpose of allowing us to go to the Zoning Board of Appeals seeking a variance uh, for the um, ordinance uh, limitations on Leach Avenue. As, as you probably know, uh, Leach Avenue has been uh, the subject of some changes over the past couple of years with some additional lots. And um, the, it's turned from a sort of a uh, downtrodden back area back here uh, to a, actually a a, a pretty good uh, place to live and, and a good place to uh, build a home. We have um, two lots proposed by my client and, and he lives on, uh, Mr. Troches lives on Market Street. So these parcels abut him and uh, part of his ownership already. Um, and uh, what you see are two 13,000 and change square foot lots, one 13,434, one 13, uh, 131 with 110 feet of frontage. Um, can, can I share that now? I'm sorry? Can I share the uh, Absolutely, the map? Uh, thank you, Rob, yep. Okay, we should be up. Yep. So we'd like to extend Leach Avenue uh, down to about the middle of uh, lot one. Um, and uh, pretty just to be consistent with what what the board and the, uh, the the planning board and the zoning board has approved in the past for the other lots further to the east. Um, I'm going to let Bruce discuss uh, any issues regarding elevation, drainage, etc. I know one question came up as to um, uh, drainage. However, this is a preliminary plan, and obviously we have to be back to the to the planning board to iron out all of those issues. Um, not sure whether that's appropriate at this point, uh, given the cost of, of um, analyzing that, showing everything on the plan. Uh, we need to get obviously past the, the Board of Appeals uh, before we can get the final blessing from the planning board. 
So on a preliminary subdivision, uh, we would respectfully request that uh, we be allowed uh, to, uh, to get this to, to allow us to move forward to the Board of Appeals. Bruce, do you have anything yes, to add sure. here? Yeah, again, we've uh, prepared that preliminary plan for the purpose of going to the Board of Appeals. What we've done is the road that's been constructed so far up to our, up to our point has been with 24 feet of bituminous paving, granite curbing, and a concrete <coughs> sidewalk on one side. We're proposing to extend that same construction down through through our project. We've extended the paving beyond the driveway at, at lot one, so it's so they can back out of the driveway and, and turn around. We're trying to limit the amount of pervious area. So we don't want to increase any runoff off the site. The beginning of that project is the high point of that road going back to those three other lots that have been constructed. We're going to pitch that down to a proposed trench drain and recharge area on our lot. I've discussed this with uh, my engineer, Rizzo Antonero, and uh, he, he would be involved when we get to the subdivision stage. He assures me that there's, you know, that that would be provide no increased runoff. What we do is any increased runoff would be contained in that recharge area. Um, I know it was mentioned that there is some kind of a, a flooding problem or a flow problem. And again, by, we are obligated not to increase the runoff off the site. But if there's a problem, and I'm not really aware of it, but when we're not required to solve it, although we do attempt to do so, the only obligations we have is not to add to that, to that runoff off the site. Extended the sewer line through the back of, it came in from Marcus Street through the back of the previous lots, and we're extending that down through our two lots. The water main was brought in to, uh, for the other lots, and we're extending that down and putting a hydrant at the end of the lot, end of the road for flushing purposes. Um, the topography is very severe at the end, so I mean, it, it really excludes us from content, continuing the road up, even though it's very narrow, up to Copeland Street. There's quite a severe slope there, so we're, uh, that's probably one of the hardships on the site. I think that's, that's about it. And again, we, are, we have discussed the site with Zoo and uh, we will be involved in the engineering should we be allowed to go forward. Okay. Um, very good. Uh, okay, so just uh, for the board members, just by way of background, um, this was the, Originally, this was the location of the three lot, the three lot subdivision that was originally on Leach Avenue. That I think Mr. Was that Manny Bojenga? Is that was that correct? Is that accurate? And I know that the, the board at the time had two major concerns. One was uh, the the adequacy of the sewer easement that went from the back, servicing the back of these. Three, the, three, the, three, the then three <coughs> lots out to Market Street, that was satisfied. And then the other concern was that the, they needed to demonstrate that, the, that they had the ability to turn um, uh, emergency response equipment you know, through the openings in, the, in, in, their, in their proposed paving to go into the um, parking lot of, of uh, South Junior High School. Uh, just, for a point of information, the the parking lot ends about in alignment of that uh, what would be the last lot line of Manny's house development there, and then following that, I think I was on that zoning case. I can't remember. Uh, I think it was who was the one that developed the single lot there. I think that was uh, I guess it Steve Tory. Steve Tory, thank you very much. Steve Tory came before the. Uh, the zoning board and he sought relief to uh, to site a house on plot 30 minus two, and uh, again those same that that same concern came up, one of uh, emergency equipment, and then there was some discussion on that, and there was 
I guess it was decided that the emergency equipment <coughs> that was such a short addition to the road um, that they could just simply back their way into that opening um, that would get you back onto the uh, onto the uh, paved area of South Union High. Um, and now we have before us an extension yet again with us. I don't know what the exact length of the proposed paving is, but uh, so we keep going further and further in. Now to the, to the, it's all woods to the, on the opposite side of Leach Avenue there, that undeveloped road called Leach Avenue, that's all woods there. So if emergency equipment does go up there, there's no way now that without backing all the way down into, in making a backward backing, I guess backing into the parking lot of South Junior High that you can get emergency equipment in there. So typically, uh, Chief Williams, so typically what goes, if you have a medical emergency or a fire emergency, I, I guess you would think I would retain this by now, but what do you, what do you send at a minimum to, to a residence of this nature? What do you send for equipment? Did we, did we lose it? Did we lose Chief Williams? He's on mute. I didn't realize I was on mute. Um, a fire engine, uh, which would be an, either an engine or a ladder, um, and an ambulance would be the minimal for a medical call. Um, a small outside fire or something would just be a fire, um, an engine, a pump, a truck. Uh, it, it does, I guess the zoning board has approved this already? No, they no. no, no, this is no. They have it. Okay. No, right. they have not. I'm getting my cases confused today then. So it does make um, a bit of a, a problem for us, although we do have other dead ends in the city. Um, this is different because we don't allow them any longer. We allowed it with, um, when Steve did this, they made a cut through to, to uh, South Junior High. And um, this goes up further into what would be the grass area of South Junior High so that we wouldn't have to cut through any longer. Uh, the zoning board has approved it up to the, the the lot right next door. Yes, they did, but that was but but opposite that is all, all grass. It's either grass or wooded uh, turning the custom. That's all either grass or wooded. The the actual paved area stops at the uh, at the, at that last at the most westerly line of of Mr. Bojanga's last lot. So if you were to drop an imaginary line down between. Uh, at Manny Bojanga's lap is most westerly lot. That's where the paving ends. So they, they would have to back up a, a uh, considerable distance to get, and then do, and then do a three point turn to get out of there. So it, it is a concern. It certainly is a concern about getting in and getting uh, emergency equipment in and out of the site. So right, right up to the driveway of the uh, third lot up that was developed there was an entrance made into South Junior High so that we could pull in there and turn right around. That's correct. Just a short area there. This would go up into a large area and um, it actually looks like, was that a private roadway or is that a public roadway that goes all the way out to Copeland Street? Oh, it's private. Private? Okay. I believe that's private. Okay. Engineering has said it's it's private that the roadway layout doesn't exist after that point. Okay. So it, it's not a private right of way, it is real property. It's their property, yeah. Who's property? If I could share another screen. Hang on just a second, please. So these are the, the three houses from Manny Bajinga. This is the new house that Steve Torrey built. And I want you to note that the, the sewer easement stops before you get to Steve Torrey. So Steve Torrey is going to have to grant an easement 
to get the sewer across, and we don't see any evidence of that. Um, you'll notice that these lines are dashed or have openings in them, and that implies, according to Howard Newton, and I concur, that these properties are what is being shown as Leach Ave, actually because it's been, a, looks like it's been abandoned, is actually owned by this property owner. So it does not appear that this is actual right of way after this point. Well, that little lot that goes up, that's about 20 feet wide, that goes up to Copeland is actually part of the 20,000 square foot lot. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So for clarity, Mr. May, are you saying that 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 the dash portion of Le of Leach Avenue or, or the portion of Leach Avenue that's in front of these two proposed lots is 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 private property? Uh, typically, when you see a survey like this and you have this dash open space, those are generally implies that those are one piece of property. We own the fee. The client owns the fee in that road. I mean, it's part of. We have every right. There's nobody else with rights in that in that. Right. Scenario, I believe. As you can see, also that's the same situation that the Board of Appeals approved and the Planning Board approved for Lot 30-2 uh, prior for Steve Torrey. That 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 was always part of the parcel. So we don't the... know if this 17,000 square foot lot actually has the right to cross Mr. Torrey's property, um, as this is indicated the same way with the dashed line. So I think that there needs to be a little bit more research on that. Well, you know, we, we there's no, I don't believe there's any issue with regard to um, getting any kind of uh, agreement between the parties on that. And, it, and it's, it's laid out, it's shown on the plan as, as a private way uh, parties have the, the right to improve to the middle of the way. They own the, at least to the middle of the way. And I, I don't know about how much research needs to be done, at least this, at this juncture, for purposes of going to the Board of Appeals. This, this dashed line would, would make me, and, and likewise Howard uh, Newton, uh, suppose that this is not a, a way at all that is actually real estate. Uh, it's owned not to the center line by the people, but it's, it's actually owned in its entirety. As same as lot 30-2. Yeah, but this lot, which I believe in your drawings you are calling lot 2, does not have the right to cross uh, I think it does, but uh, I think we could, you know, again, Rob, that's something that <clears throat> I, don't, I don't think for tonight's purposes uh, on a preliminary subdivision, we need to, to resolve all of the legal issues, uh, especially because it's a preliminary matter. I think, I think if anything, if we, need to, if we need to research that further, that we have that available if the Board of Appeals allows us to come, you know, to, to do this, <clears throat> come back to you when we have it resolved. This isn't something that you should hold up at the preliminary subdivision approval for us. I, I do, is, is there a reason why there is no provision for any cul-de-sac or turnaround for emergency vehicles at the end of the road? Just, there just isn't room to, to do that, you know, to make a full-size 60-foot radius cul-de-sac. I mean, they just would take the whole, that whole area, I mean, a good portion of that whole area. So it's not practical. Um, uh, and if we were constructing that, and, and it would probably knock it down to the one lot if we construct it, and then it wouldn't be worth, worth even building it for the, the one for the one lot. So again, it's, we, we know the issue. And again, there is a break in the, in the, in the guide rail just by that just at the end of the original three lots. And again, I, I know that with the if, if there was an emergency there, if the equipment had to had to get out of there with, there would be at least an attendant, they could back up. I mean, not saying what 
what you'd agree to or what the board would agree to. But physically, I've watched watch them back trucks in and out of the Camp Ella fire station all day long. So again, it's doable and I'm not trying to be sarcastic. I just wanted to uh, bring that up. I understand that. I just, I just don't think that since we're not allowing dead ends like that anymore, why, why do we need to approve this? I, I have a similar concern. I mean, I really do. Um, I know that, I know that that, even as short as the extension was to to allow the plot 30 minus 2 to be developed, I know that that was, I believe that was, I know I was at that zoning board meeting. There was some concern and there was some discussion about allowing that pavement to go. I, I, there's not a dimension on that lot. It doesn't look like it's too wide, but there was some concern about that, letting that go. And after some discussion, I guess it was, a, it was agreed that a piece of emergency equipment could back up that very short way and do what uh, Mr. Malcolm had just suggested, and that is to do a three-point turn back into the into the, pa the existing paving of South Junior High and then move out of there. But now you're adding, I mean, it's just, it's just, it's not, it's, it's, far, it's far from an ideal situation in my opinion. I mean, unless, unless you see Alternatively, if you were to split the houses, I mean, possibly because of the uh, generous amount of room that you've got between the existing house that uh, Mr. Tory built, if you were to squeeze the to the right-hand house to the right and the left-hand house to the left, could you get some sort of a cul-de-sac in a cul-de-sac in between the two houses? Something, something so that a vehicle can turn can make a swing around there. I mean, you, you can you move the, I'm just, it's not up to me to design your plan, but can you move, can you separate the houses and then try to get some semblance of a, of a, a, a cul-de-sac, half cul-de-sac in there for some, some sort of a, 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 of a turning, I, I don't know. Mr. Chair, you do have, although your rules and regs say no hammerhead turnarounds. And yeah. this case, that might be something they ask. Something what? But do engineering wants that turnaround? I'm sorry, say it again, Pam, I'm sorry. And engineering would like to see that a turnaround. Of some nature, of some kind. Of some nature, yes. Yeah. So not backing up. Well, if you, if you put a hammerhead if you put a hammerhead, no matter how wide, you'd have to make a three-point turn, Mr. Um, you'd have Pam? to make a three-point turn to, to uh, however else you do it. If you back in and then nose out, or if you nose in and back out, you'd have to make a, a three-point turn to change to change the direction of these degrees. Um, Pam, did engineering also have a comment that there is no proposed drain or proposed sanitary sewer in the street? Um, or, or did they have issues, I'm sorry, with the sanitary sewer crossing the, the lot that didn't have the easement yet? Correct. That it shows that the easement exists and they do not have any easement documents that show that the e that, that easement goes beyond where we first saw it in, in our Manny Bajinga's subdivision. There is, a, there, is a, there is an agreement with Steve Gorey to grant easements and to extend the sewer down. Again, I'm just... Does he still own that house? Yeah, he still owns it right now. And he and I think he had me prepare a plan, an easement plan, what he's done with it, I don't know, but it, extending that each sewer easement down to the lot line of, of, of our property. The, uh, again, the straight drainage, we we're proposing to put a drain at the end of the road and, and, and recharge it. Sewer is definitely going to be extended, and I show, I show extending the sewer, and I, we have rights. Steve Jory has verbally granted us rights, and whether he's done it on paper yet, I don't know. But he has, has agreed to extend that. Obviously, I would assume that Steve would agree to do that. I think Steve would agree to do that. I, uh, Attorney McCluskey, I, I know I can, I appreciate you don't want to get too much into the weeds as far as the technical issues, as far as the legal issues at the preliminary stage, but maybe 
if you would humor me on one, one question, and that is simply that I know that there was an easement, that there was a 15 foot wide sewer easement that was established to service those three houses, the, the Manny Bojenga's three houses. So in establishing that easement for their benefit, does that mean that anybody can just tag on to that easement? Does, any, does that mean that everybody and anybody has rights to use that, that, that easement for sewer purposes? Or isn't it just limited to those three houses? Well, I, th I think if the, I'd have to look at that plan again. I, and I apologize, I don't recall that plan. But I think if it went to the edge of the lot, well, first of all, I think they could extend that easement. You can move easements, you have the right to do certain things with easements. Um, and I'm, I'm forgetting what that, what that easement looks like. That, yeah, that, that went out a, that went out to Market Street, I believe. Yes, it did. And yes. if you recall, that was the issue we had with the rights of getting it out to Market Street. Yeah. Which, which you did. I, I certainly I certainly think that Steve Torrey could allow us to to uh, in, engage into that easement um, without any issues as a as a lot owner. But the, but the, I guess but my question is, and again, I, I don't want to get too much into the weeds with easements, but isn't that isn't the easement wasn't the original easement that was that was no. established for the for the cross benefit of the three homeowners? I mean that's well, I that's that's well that was all that was out there at the time. Yeah, yeah easements are for a specific purpose and, and to Take benefit ahead. someone in it specifically. Yeah, but it doesn't mean you you are limited to that uh, if the homeowners or a homeowner agrees to allow you to access his easement rights. Do, would you need to get sign-offs from, from many Bojangas uh, successors there? Uh, does the, Bruce, does Steve still own one of these lots? Just just the 30-30, 30 dash, 30 dash, yeah. the last one we just had approved. I, I think we can do it through that lot. But I mean, does does this, does, would you also have well, to get I, releases from the three lots that Mr. Bojanga built and sold? Well, I, I don't necessarily think so, because if you're, you know, you're not, overburdening it, so to speak. It's not something that people are going to uh, be looking at and saying, oh, this easement's changed dramatically. It really, it's a, it's a, a de minimis um, addition onto the usage of the, of the uh, infrastructure. Okay. All right. Thank you. Well, I mean, we could. Um... Mr. Chair. Yes. Your choices, I'd like to see that language. your choices here are only three things. You can approve it as it is now and allow them to move on. You can deny it or you can approve it with certain conditions made. That's it. Are you, are you, are you certain that we can't continue a preliminary? Approval? You can continue it, certainly. You could continue it to another meeting. But your choices are, if you pass it the way it is now, then those changes don't get made. So you would need to, if you want certain things changed, you would need to put them into your decision now. Okay, well, I was thinking more in terms of, I don't know, certainly the other board members, please, uh, uh, you know, render your, render your opinion. I was thinking we're giving the applicant the opportunity through, through a continuance to give the, op the applicant an opportunity to address those issues and maybe revise the plan for something, uh, to revise the plan to, um, to reflect the concerns that the board has, has here tonight and has expressed here tonight as far as um, investigating that sewer, but certainly as far as coming up with some sort of a trend. Because that's- I don't, that's I don't see a reason to continue. One I don't see a reason continue, to continue in that um, there's there's a lot of questions with the plan as presented that uh, if they want to if they want to progress, they need to come forward with a plan that that actually suits. I mean what we what we're looking for. Um, there's been a lot of interest in that whole small little area over the last couple of years, and I can't I can't support it and continuing this plan uh, the way the way it's presented. Well, then then you're saying that we could continue to come back with a modification. I'd like to see, I'd like to see it presented in a whole new, with a whole new presentation. 
uh, let's continue it. All right. Let's, uh, I, mean, I, I'd agree with that. They're asking for a continuation. We've expressed it. The board's the board and the city has expressed their concerns. I think it's reasonable to give the applicant an opportunity to try to address them. Sure. Mm -hmm. Right. And that, um, includes, in my opinion, that would include after the plan has been revised to take it to the engineering department, take it to the planning department, and get their input on it before it comes back to the planning board. I mean, Fair so what, in the, what is the difference between continuing it or denying the plan? They, they have to come back with a whole new plan, either way. Well, it just saves them from, from applying again. Well, which means another I mean, check. The, you know, quite yeah. frankly, Craig, uh, the, the, I would think that your position should be, let's try to make this uh, something that's workable for the applicant and, and make it uh, something that we can move forward without throwing up a roadblock. We're, we're willing to continue it. Uh, we're willing to come, you know, we're willing to talk about some changes. And I, and I think that's a very reasonable request and, and uh, you know, to, to throw a, uh, uh, throw a denial in, in, in front of it, it just means you get a one more step. And I don't think you should be I doing that. I think, yeah, I think you, you realize I'm the last one to throw up roadblocks. And, uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> don't start tonight. <laughs> <laughs> but, but this, I mean, there's, there's been a lot of questions around all the, I mean, we, we have had a lot of deliberation around every development around that, that entire that tiny little area of the city. And um, to have a plan come back with, that needs total revision, um, is it such a big thing to ask to come back with a new plan? Um, uh, whether we continue well, well, it or deny it. You know, and, and that's just it. Come back, we, we can come back with a modification. It, you know, everything that, everything that you'd ask an applicant to do, the more, the more time that people have to throw at it, the more expensive it gets for them. And this is something he's just looking at, hey, is this something I, that maybe I can get to the Board of Appeals? So let's, let's not make it harder on him. Let's, let's you know, let him move on. That, well, that's, that's, I'm, not, I'm not trying to make it harder on anybody, but there are just so many questions with the, with the plan. Well, and we're going to answer them, hopefully. Greg, we, we, we've raised those, and I think we, I think we, I think we, we raised those concerns and we, we, with, our, with an explanation uh, to boot so that give the, my feeling is give the applicant an, at least an opportunity and then fair enough. If he comes back and it's, and it's not to your liking, then uh, you'll have to, you'll have to uh, yep. vote accordingly. We're not doing any harm by continuing. This is, this is what the preliminary plan process is. I think my colleague, uh, Tony Gonzalez said she can, she can agree with that. If she's willing to make a motion to continue, I'll, I'll second it. Is there Thank a motion you. to continue? I'll make, I'll make a motion to continue to address the issues second. with the sewer easement. Is there a second? Are you second. Continuing to the next meeting? Is that enough time, um, Mr. McCluskey? We're, I'm sorry. Are you continuing uh, to the a next a meeting? Couple, a couple months, I think. Two uh, months? This is, in, two this is in Florida. So I think, Bruce, what do you think, two months? Yes, I mean, we, we just got to address the issues. I mean, the physical changing of the plan is, we can, be, we can do it and I can be back in a day to, to, to do it. We've got to decide how we're going to, the sewer easement, I can see that's easily addressed, but the turnaround is something we have to, we have to work on. So again, I think two months will be a reasonable extension. Okay, to, uh, to continue for two months, Pam, thank you. Second. Who, who seconded? Me. All right, Craig seconded. So there's been a motion made and seconded to continue the plan to, to the December meeting. The applicant has heard uh, the concerns of the planning board and the planning department. So uh, they, I'm sure they'll, they'll revise the plan accordingly. Okay, a vote. roll call vote. Uh, Craig Pina? Yes. Reggie Thomas? Yes. Tony Gonzalez? Yes. Larry Hassan? Yes. Apalaji is a yes. Thank you, members of the board, and Craig, thank you. Thank yes, you. thank you. Thank you. Have a good evening. Okay. Uh, the next agenda item is item number six. It's a definitive subdivision of properties at NAP 37, plots 4, 6, and 18, Augusta Avenue, and plots. 
in plot 36 Cross State Street. It's an 18 lot residential subdivision. The owner is Frederick Hebshi, the uh, and the representative is Curly and Hanson. Um, let's see, do we have them on? Uh, Bill Self is here. Um, Todd is here. Todd is there. Bill Self is there. Good evening, gentlemen. And I'm, and I'm here. Guessing that everybody that's left is, as attendees is here for that. Yes. Yes. Shall I start? Good evening. Uh, yes, good evening. So I, I've read the agenda item and uh, are you on this case, I assume, Mr. McCluskey? I've known Freddie for 75 years. I've known him for 150. <laughs> <laughs> You're both a lot younger than I thought you were. All right, please, please. Oh. Begin. <laughs> so I'm here by default. Um, Yes, uh, so this is a, a an old, old subdivision that was never never built out. Uh, this is Bruce calling me. Um, old subdivision that was, uh, wasn't was built out, but for 100 Augusta. Uh, and um, so that uh, sat for quite some while, some time. Um, I know Fred came before the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals a couple of years ago seeking relief for one of the lots. And um, subsequent to that, we, we sat down and, and looked at this subdivision, especially in light of um, some of the most recent changes regarding what the Board of Appeals and what the Planning Board is looking for in new subdivisions. And uh, Bill Self and, and, and I and, and Todd have been involved in this for quite some time. Um, and we're looking at uh, obviously the frontage and square footage of each lot uh, the older subdivision, the uh, frontage and, and square footage was insufficient relative to the new standards that have been um, basically uh, indicated by the by the boards. And um, so Bill has uh, Bill and Todd have uh, drawn out uh, some significant changes to this plan. Uh, we recently met with the neighbors um, back. Um, couple of weeks ago over at the old North Junior High and tried to uh, get through some of the issues. I think we did fairly successfully. Uh, I know there's some questions that some of the um, public have, some of the neighbors have, uh, but I think uh, maybe, I'm not sure how we're going to do this lot by lot, but uh, uh, oh, um, uh, Fred sold his home to Reverend Michael uh, and, and uh, there have been some changes to we're trying to accommodate him significantly uh, interestingly enough his lender let him purchase this property with his driveway uh, still existing on on fred's property not quite sure how that happened but um we've uh i went out to the property uh, a week ago and we looked at the driveway and have since uh, he hasn't seen it yet but since has modified the side yard um configuration to accommodate what the Reverend has as uh, his existing layout. Um, so perhaps, uh, Bill, maybe I'll turn it over to you to uh, yes, go through the details. Yes, good evening. Uh, my name is Bill Self, Curly and Hanson. We prepared the plans for Mr. Hebshe. Uh, we we're in front of the board. We filed them actually last year. And, and uh, at the time we had, uh, had proposed 18 lots and uh, we had minimum frontages that uh, through consultation with the Board of Appeals and, and Planning Board, uh, we got the consensus that the, the minimums uh, should be no less than 125 feet. Uh, originally we had 18 lots and what we did was uh, the 18 lots actually uh, include uh, one small parcel that would be combined with the abutting land of the of the house that's there that the Reverend has bought. And uh, the second lot, which is labeled lot four, is designated just for drainage. So the original was 16 uh, lots that we had, 16 proposed buildable lots. Uh, we've reduced it down to uh, uh, 13. We've uh, made the lots uh, bigger. 
we've tried to incorporate on most all the lots uh, to have minimum frontage 125 and also to try to have the, uh, the lot width and depth uh, meet the requirements. <clears throat> Excuse me. There are a couple that, uh, that, that uh, I'd like to go over lot by lot that deals with that, that item. But basically it's the, uh, it's the uh, cutting the lots down to be 125 feet minimum frontage. Uh, most of them, most of them have areas that uh, are larger than pretty much all of the adjacent lots in that area uh, on the existing uh, Augusta Ave, uh, Caseri, Angela, Cross Ave, and then uh, out on to Prospect Street. Uh, so uh, the original, the original subdivision was 1965. We've adjusted the roadways from that original slightly. Uh, back in 65, they had actually 21 proposed lots. Uh, so we're gone, we've gone from the original subdivision in 1965 down to, from 21 down to 13. Uh, so uh, I think uh, if, uh, if uh, Mr. May could, could maybe put, uh, as far as the plans, if he could put sheet number four, it would give you an overall the overall picture of the lotting plan on a 40 scale that would uh, perhaps give the board a, a much better view of individual lots. Just a second. Whoops. Here you are, sir. Okay. Thank you, Rob. Uh, as you look at it, uh, uh, John uh, just brought up uh, as far as the house the, that was number 100, the existing dwelling, 100 Augusta Ave. You can see that the original plan, if you could slide that down just a whisker, Rob, you can see that that was proposed as a, uh, as a, as a, as a lot uh, on the original submittal we made last year. As John uh, brought up that uh, the, our, uh, this proposal that you see here, that uh, it, it showed that I, I believe it's, it, we've labeled it as lot 14. And it's, uh, if it's right next to the, where the driveway is. Uh, what we've done is uh, we had originally proposed the lot and uh, try to incorporate as much as the driveway as we could and then still leave the, as lot 13 uh, with including around the curve uh, the 125 minimum frontage and the, the lot width uh, 125 for the depth of 100 feet. Uh, the, the plan that we, we actually sent over to the planning board, and I don't know if, uh, if uh, Pam had had a chance to see it or, or even given it to uh, Rob display is what John brought up that in essence, uh, talking to the, to the owner, uh, Mr. Gilbert, uh, at the neighborhood meeting, uh, his, one of his <coughs> concerns was that uh, losing a little bit of the end, about five, six feet of the driveway that was there so that plan is an addendum plan we sent over to the planning board to view uh, so that we've, we've made sure that the existing driveway in its entirety would be on a separate lot. And yeah, the only- you did, They did not see that plan, it came in. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's an unfortunate, but that was the change that John was uh, mentioning. Uh, we still maintain on lot 13, we still maintain the 125 or going around the curve on the Cross Ave. Uh, but we, we, unfortunately, we don't meet the lot width uh, for that depth in the front of it. Technically, we do in the back of it. We have 125 by 100 box, if you would, on the, re on the rear of it. But we'd be and looking for the frontage, uh, the wa waiver. Uh, on the that. amended plan is what is in front of you, or what, on the screen now. Yeah, that's the that's the one. This was this was something we uh, we we sent over this week. Uh, just it was sent over late this, this afternoon. But uh, 
I know you, you're, you're, you're kind of looking at this one that we have in front of you, but we'd like to adjust that lot. Um, as far as if we could, if we can go down the line for the, for the lots, um, most of them, as you see across the street on Augusta Ave, uh, lot one, lot two, you see that we, you know, we're meeting the, uh, the you know, we're asking for variances for frontage on lot one. Uh, we're just shy of the lot width and depth on uh, on the northerly line, 99.74 instead of 100. Uh, we'll be asking the Board of Appeals, hopefully, that uh, give us relief for that small amount, couple of inches. Uh, on the on the next lot, lot two, again, you know, we'd meet the uh, the frontage coming around around the uh, halfway around the curve on that one, and uh, the lot we'd have to ask for some relief on the lot width, uh, lot depth on the on the corner lot, lot three, as you see, is the cross ave extension. Uh, that was basically, uh, if you look on your assessor's map, it's it. There is a, an easement that's been created over the years on there, and it's for sewer and water and, and uh, that comes down from the existing public way of Cross Ave, stopping at the property line. And uh, so we basically held and fit that, that, that extension of the cross to intersect more of a symmetrical uh, intersection than it was originally proposed and going across and continuing uh, in, in the longer uh, dead end street. Uh, what that did, just the roads themselves, when they come up and intersect there, you can see lot three is a creation, you know, of that intersection. There wasn't much we could do with it and then still extend the cross ave. Uh, we'd be asking for, even though we have adequate uh, over 125 feet on uh, Augusta Ave, we wouldn't be accessing it from Augusta. We'd be accessing it from cross. So we'll be asking for a relief down to the frontage of 104 uh, or a waiver with the planning board. Uh, lot four, again, if you, when we go to the larger plans, it, it designates that's the drainage area, reserved for drainage area, not a buildable lot. Uh, uh, lot five, you can see that uh, we're just shy. We have 125 minimum frontage, uh, 14,603 square feet. You can see that just that little jog in the rear of the property uh, prevents us from having that 125 for 100 feet. It's just it just protrudes into that that area. Uh, lot six, uh, same 125, 15,000 square feet. Uh, we would meet the uh, we would meet the the lot width and depth 125, uh, 100. Lot seven around the cul-de-sac. Uh, we've got plenty of area on through there uh, as far as frontage. Uh, we, we would uh, we <coughs> be 125 uh, by 100 foot uh, depth uh, regulation there. Lot eight, uh, lot seven would be 27,799. Lot eight, same situation. Uh, we would be sh a little short on the, on the lot width, lot depth on that particular lot. We, we do have uh, proposing uh, 20,276 square feet on that lot. Lot nine, again, uh, we meet the, uh, we're, we're holding, asking for a waiver 125. Uh, we meet the lot width, lot depth on that. Uh, lot 10 is, the, is just shy of the lot width, lot depth by just, again, just a couple of inches. And uh, lot 11, same situation, 125. And that lot 11 will be 13,637. Again, just missing a couple of inches on the northerly side of the, of the property. Uh, lot 12, uh, we'd, uh, we're asking for you know, relief down to the 147.36 from 175. Again, that meets the 125, 100 foot depth and, uh, and width for that lot. Uh, lot 13 is the one that you see here, it would have been 125 more than that. That's, uh, excuse the uh, total frontage listed, and that's an error. That was only halfway around. That was the total frontage on, on Augusta Ave under your regulations. Frontage is only measured halfway into the radius. Uh, so there would be another identical 17 feet. But, but if you, 
even though it technically doesn't meet the requirements of lot frontage because it's on the corner lot, it's uh, the you know the width of the lot uh, here is 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 minimum 125, and that would be straight across. Uh, this again with the revision that we wanted to uh, propose at late minute. Uh, we'd have to come back and, and, and show that uh, we would we had we'd still have close to the 28,000 square feet, but we wouldn't meet the lot width and lot depth. We do in the back from the angle point back. Technically, we do have a box of lot width on there. Uh, those are the those are the lots, and you know we feel that uh, if uh, I think Rob, if you could just switch me just to uh, dwell a couple things, just on a couple of comments from the the deputy fire chief and under the first uh, division and we've updated and sent him some information, sent them uh, these plans. If you could go to, uh, let me give you a sheet number here. If you go, go to sheet, uh, probably uh, five, uh, if you could go for uh, to 5C, Rob, uh, it's basically the grading and drainage plan. I just want to address a couple of items um, on this particular case. And if you can slide it down just a little bit, you see the connection out to Pleasant uh, Prospect Street. Uh, during the neighborhood meeting, one of the concerns were uh, from the neighbors for as far as uh, access and what we, were, what we were showing is circulation for the subdivision. Uh, and one of the concerns, if you look on the plan at at Cross Ave, where it meets the property line going going to the east, you can see that there's a guardrail there. Uh, I was told by the uh, former city councilor that uh, they had uh, asked the city because of the, the cut through traffic when they paved uh, Augusta Ave from Prospect down to the end, continued out to Cross Ave, they were getting cross uh, traffic from Cross Ave and and they had requested the council that they, they could do something to block that off. So it's presently blocked off. Um, we had, uh, you know, discussed the plans, uh, you know, with the with the neighbors and and let them know that uh, because of the number of lots, uh, most of uh, the extension of Cross Ave after goes over Augusta Ave. There's a lot of traffic that that we believe that with stop signs at the intersection. And you know certainly more houses in there with more activity, then uh, we believe it's not going to be the stop uh, or drive through that it was there before, uh, having just you know uh, no no you know nothing that prohibits the people from going straight through. Here you'd have occupations you know stop signs. I don't think it'd be worth anyone's while. One of the one of the recommendations that uh, that the deputy uh, fire chief had made was that. Uh, I, as his letter states, uh, his email was that uh, he feels that because of the number of lots and the added, uh, you know, number of people there, that it should be open. What his what his suggestion was, and we take it, uh, uh, we agree 100%, was that the roadway, the guardrail would stay while the roadway was under construction until the roadways were completed, so that you weren't dealing with the construction traffic. Uh, you know, trucks, things like that, safety issues. Uh, and then once the, once the streets were in, the infrastructure was, was in there and, and uh, they were started to, you know, to build the homes, they had the homes for sale, and then uh, the guardrail could be taken down. Again, uh, we've sent them over the new plans. Hopefully he's had a chance to, to take a look at them and send a letter uh, somewhere along the line to the planning board. His, his only other comment was he'd like to see another hydrant or two. Uh, what we did do was uh, send them over a, a, a plan highlighting exactly the number of hydrants plus the existing plus the proposed so that he'd have a better idea be able to see exactly. So we, we hope that we've satisfied his uh, request there. As far as uh, if we could go uh, back one, Rob, I believe it's, uh, I believe it's uh, 5B. Uh, the input again coming from the neighborhood meeting uh, was certainly the traffic that I, I, I think was one of the main main items. Uh, of course, it was it was a, an area of quite a bit of dumping, and uh, as soon as the occupancy on 100 Augusta Ave, it kind of blocked out the existing paved access, and 
that certainly has ceased. So it's, it's helped at least that cause. If you see at the bottom, at, here's the cul-de-sac cross Ave. You can slide it up just a little bit. One of the concerns was some of the neighbors down along Augusta Ave, and that would have been to the east there, uh, plot 10, plot, plot 11, that the natural flow of the property is from, from west to east across the proposed cross Ave, uh, which that would intercept quite a bit of the, uh, the surface water and put it into the drainage system. And uh, the other thing that we assured them that we've tried another, another projects and been very successful that uh, at the backs of our lots, uh, we would install a, an earthen swale that would remain an earth and just a, a depression, a swaled area. It'll be grass, loomed and seeded. Uh, it'll be able to be mowed. Um, and hopefully with, uh, with their concern certainly was water. They get water now uh, that would, uh, would certainly uh, improve their conditions as far as surface water. Uh, there's no guarantees we can make as far as water tables where the foundations are constructed. Certainly that years back, they, they didn't pay a lot of attention to that. Uh, one other uh, concern by one of the neighbors specifically that uh, at, the, at the end of the cul-de-sac lot there, which is lot seven, was that he was wondering at the, about the trees, the vegetation and the land itself over the years, I think when they sat, when they built the first part or over the years, it's not been a, it's not an original uh, site. It's been, uh, it's been dug out, it's been, you know, fill's been brought in, you know, so, but his concerns were about the vegetation of the, of the road, how much of the trees were going to leave. And we told him, you know, in this particular case, because the, because of the, the topography of what's existing now and the nature of it, that uh, most of these trees would be, would be probably removed, uh, except on the, on the borders, <laughs> on the edges. Uh, certainly, if there's any large native trees, uh, you know, healthy trees along the back properties of Augusta Rav, then uh, we'd try to maintain anything we could. But his, his suggestion uh, or his, his request was that we, uh, if we're going to lose the vegetation, to put, a, put uh, you know, something like a stockade fence and uh, you know, through consultation, uh, we, we believe that that would be something that we certainly entertain in the plans for the planning board to to have a view at, as well as the Board of Appeals. So along those that property lines down in Augusta, you can see that they're, they're, very, they're very small, you know, small lots themselves. So, you know, they're, they're something that, uh, that we, we give them the privacy as well as reserve the privacy for the, for the new lots and the new, and the new homes that would, that would be going in there. Uh, I think that's I've covered most of what we're proposing. Uh, basically, the the waivers we'd be asking for are the frontage waivers, and the length of the uh, dead end by extending, by extending uh, cross Ave. Uh, if you could slide that down a little bit, Rob, uh, to show the intersection of of the other street. Uh, it was just over 700 feet but we'd ask for a waiver for the roadway depth because of the dead end. Uh, but uh, uh, it certainly gives it a better flow, you know, for, for the lots coming in there. So you'd see Cross Ave coming from, from uh, north, coming down from the cul-de-sac down intersection of, of uh, Augusta Ave, the existing intersection, then that would be about 700 feet in length. So basically, that's what we'd be looking for under the planning board uh, rules and regulations. Um, all right, Mr. Uh, Bill, are you is that does that complete your presentation? Yeah, the only just if I could just touch on one more point, uh, Bob, is just uh, Augusta Rav that was actually built partially, uh, and from Prospect all the way out to Earl Street. That was actually built uh, in 1925. Within that, that easement rights were or for Augusta Ave, even though it's, it's private now, was they, they installed uh, uh, water, they installed drainage, and also installed sewer. So the infrastructure, as far as that goes, that you see Augusta Ave from Prospect out to Earl, there being a drainage, uh, there being a utility easement from at the end of Augusta, <coughs> presently existing out to Earl Street, 
that was physically done. So we're actually tying into the, to those, to those uh, utilities and those uh, uh, drain and sewer lines that are out there now, including the water. Okay. Are you, um, I was going to ask you, Bill, uh, so are you in receipt of the, of that list of uh, concerns uh, that I believe the engineering department generated up, that came through the planning department, but did you, was that sent along to you? Do you have that? Well, it, the original, we had a list of original uh, concerns that we've addressed most of those questions, uh, but we we have not heard uh, just late this afternoon. We did get some a little information of a couple of things that uh, uh, Chiki had looked at, and we'd like to you know certainly didn't have a chance to address them. But certainly we we uh, sit down with him. Uh, some of them was uh, one of the con the concerns he just addressed uh, with a quick email was uh, some of the uh, the the swale um, down at behind the lots on Augusta Rav. Uh, was he was looking for some access to it, but uh, we'd like to sit down and talk to him. It's it's really not a drain easement. It's not really functioning as the drainage per se. It's just taking surface water. Yeah, uh, we've done it in other places and it's worked very successful. It's kept up by the homeowners. There's no expense or no uh, maintenance on it by the town. They basically it's going to be a lawn. Uh, so we'd like to you know we'd like to sit down and talk to him on that. Yeah, uh, I know. It certainly, uh, we did not. Uh, that's the only thing, you know. It was preliminary. Uh, we haven't heard, seen a complete review. We've re redone quite a bit of the lots, incorporated a lot of his comments, you know, in this new revision. So, yeah. uh, in all fairness to uh, Chicky, uh, to have an opportunity, uh, we were anticipating another list to be able to, you know, go through and just, you know, finalize whatever concerns he might have. No. Yes. I spoke with him about four o'clock and he said he wasn't adding anything at that time, so. Well, he, uh, as far as the list of his concerns, one of the, a couple of the concerns, uh, well, well, we've already, like I said, we've addressed a lot of the concerns. One of the concerns were if you look at the sheets, uh, normally you might have a 40 scale throughout. What we've done is kept, you know, you've seen the, the sheet that's in front of us now, sheet four, but the rest of the utility plans and things like that, he requested that we, we put them on a 20 scale. So we have, our plans do uh, uh, tend to be a little bit busy. We like to put all the information on them. So at his request, we enlarged the, uh, the most of the set to incorporate that 20 scale, uh, make it uh, easier. It does make it easier actually for construction uh, in, in later stages and things like that, but that's one of the concerns. The only other concern <coughs> that, that I addressed, and he, he had requested that we put this on the uh, mass GIS system. Uh, unfortunately, it, uh, you know, it's, uh, if we had known uh, that that would have been one of his requests, we certainly would have, would have, would have done that. Uh, still maintaining the Brockton city base for the elevations, but um, to, for us to have to change that, I mean, it's not part of your regulations. Uh, but again, if we had, we had completed the project and uh, I'm sure Mr. Plagi knows that uh, how much work would have gone into having to do that at the last minute. So Yeah, that's, a, that's an awful lot of work. It's yeah, and, and again, if my, my suggestion was if, if, if that's going to be the standard for the city, all, you know, uh, we as surveyors, uh, it's not an issue for us as long as we know going in. Uh, we tie into that system, and then you know we can. It could be adaptable, uh, you know, into mostly a GIS maps as well. So, to me, it's a good idea. But unfortunately, not a the late state in the game for for an applicant coming <laughs> in. It's an undue expense for the applicant. Yeah, we don't. The buttons aren't that good on the on the on the on the new computers to, to rotate it and shift it, Bob. Yeah. Other than that, that's what we, we'd asked uh, that uh, that we can you consider us the, the the system that we're on would be adequate. So you you know in a nutshell you know uh, Bill that um, so that that little that little shot laundry list that we got today that was uh, the city he's suggesting a permanent maintenance easement needed to the city of Brockton for four five six and seven that's that thirty foot wide easement that you've indicated in the back of those lots. Yeah, and I, I, I mean, I'd like to make, talk to the board uh, and and to Chiki. But again, you know, we've done this uh, up in Linwood Street and was very successful. And the, all the, the only thing, the only part of that that easement, Bob, would be if you looked at uh, the utility back in the fives. Uh, 
Uh, sheet five, if I can just give you that sheet, Bob, and you could put it up there. Yeah, I'm looking at 5D. Yeah, 5B, if you look at 5B, uh, right, you can see the only, the only part that, that would, would have, uh, we feel a, a point of maintenance would be, would be down at the, if the where, it, where it cuts into Augusta Rab. You can see that the catch basin, yeah. you can see that there's a, the, that last contour of 157, Bob. Yep. Uh, that's pretty much, we, we're trying to slow it down. So any, and it's only gonna be in a heavy rainstorm that you, you're probably gonna see. It's just coming off the grass in the back of the building. Yeah. Now you can see on all of our lots, we have the recharge from the roofs going into, uh, into recharge units that'll be sub, subsurface. So we're not putting the roof drainage in there. So it's really, to, it's really as a mechanism to uh, try to prevent what the residents already were getting. Uh, that was overland flooding at some, you know, heavy, heavy storm. So we know that this could, could really resolve some of the problems. But as far as the maintenance, if you look down at the intersection, you can see the catch basin that goes into the existing manhole E5. You can see that we do have an access road right there, right next to the basin, which would be the only part of the uh, functioning, you know, uh, drainage uh, easement that would be, you'd need, you know, maintenance on. Well, what, that's that was going to be one of my comments. I thought looking at the plan, and I saw Chiquet's recommendation or suggestion for an additional 10 foot wide access along the back of the length of the easement. I mean, your lots, your building lots are impacted enough as it is. And I'm not, I'm not 100% sure. I mean, there's another way to address that. I think you just began to do it. This is my personal thought. You, so long as there's access, uh, along Augusta Avenue into the 30, 30 foot wide easement, and you don't have any piping in there. Um, and, and it looks like the, to me that the slopes that you're going to be creating in your swale are gentle enough. I mean, you got five to ones, you got six to one slopes on average. If you put where I'm going with this, in place of committing to a ten, an additional 10 foot wide access easement, you, you, could, you could achieve the same thing by just allowing for a tractor, what's going, what's realistically, what's going to go in that easement for maintenance? It's going to be a backhoe of some, of some sort of maybe a mowing machine. If you, if you could physically enter from Augusta Avenue and then maybe, and then maybe see if you can come up with a location for a 10 foot wide easement on the, on the uh, point of compass here on the, uh, on the yep. northerly side of, of lot number seven, I don't know if the board members are following me. That yeah, would allow that, that you could enter. be done. You see what I'm saying there? Yes. That would yep. allow you to enter the easement, stay within your easement, bring your maintenance equipment in there. Again, I'm suggesting that the, that the slopes that you're going to create in your swale are going to be gentle enough that you can negotiate and navigate it with a machine. And then if you wanted to leave it, uh, pick, some, pick some favorable, non-impactful location that goes across lot seven to come back out onto the street. Does that seem reasonable? Yes, and that, that could be done right along. We, we, we'd probably come in from the property line, probably see the bottom of the slope there, 174, Bob? Yeah. Coming off the cul-de-sac. We could, we, could, we could put in a 10-foot easement there to be able to gain access to that end of it. Again, we, we really feel that, you know, that's going to be, that'll always be maintained by the homeowner. It's going to be grass. It's going to be part of their, their landscape. Uh, you know, over the over the time, I'm sure they'll plant some shrubs or things like that for beautification. Yeah. But it's 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 not something that you would you would tend to need a maintenance factor for street maintenance. No, uh, all the infrastructure so. in the, in the the cross ave extension that's going to handle the drainage runoff down yeah. into that detention area at lot four. I think so. I, I agree. Rob, can you bring up sheet 5D, 5 David? Working on it. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. And then when you get that, just focus on lot number seven. I mean, I'm just, I mean, it's up to you guys what you want to design, but I was just suggesting something. You see, Bill, where your, you, you, where your grass wheel begins or ends, Yes. To the, to the rear. I mean, you've got some fairly flat ground there. 
you, you could you could you could create an easement of 10 or 15 whatever you want 12 foot wide easement yeah i agree to get a vehicle you know because that that area that you're talking about is uh that's fairly slow but you get the idea is pick yep. some place there and then that that completes the circuit for a an act for a for a maintenance vehicle should you need one and then you and don't that, have to you don't have to further impact the backs of these lots right and again i would uh, we we could certainly I, I'd want to keep it at the uh, just off the bottom of the slope at that one uh, one seventy four grade, yeah, and then be able to run it right in there and then exit, uh, you know, you know, right at the end of the cul de sac, which would be you know more than enough area to, to be able to access it. Sure. Well, it's just my thought, anyway. But... Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah. Does the board does the board members have any other thoughts or comments or? All right. Uh, well, okay, so um, this being a public hearing, um, is there anybody who's in attendance that would like to speak in favor of this uh, subdivision, definitive subdivision? Would you please acknowledge yourself? Oh, I just want to make some I'm sorry? Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, Pam. No, it's actually Stay Shirley. Um, I'm the Ward 7 City Councilor. I was just on, I'm on the, um, the call and I just want to go on record as um, you know that we have had neighborhood meetings and that the engineer has uh, made some changes that you know the residents had requested so we have opened up lines of communication between the project and um, and the residents so we just um, I just want to go on the record and I apologize I'm, I'm on my phone and um, so just Shirley Azak what seven city councilor I'm in favor of the um, the uh, the applicant. Thank you, thank you, Councilor Azak. Uh, is there anybody else who would like to speak in favor? Um, so I just want to make sure I'm talking about the right thing. Is uh, this is the the um, the building that's is that the one that's on Earl Street? No, are we still there? No, we're not there yet. Uh, is this is there an a bill is there an Earl Street that's part of your network? Yeah, if you go back, yes. if, if you go back to either sheet four or actually the uh, the uh, sheet one, Bob, if you just Rob, if you could put that up, uh, it'll it'll locate you know whoever is calling in for the abutters. I believe she may have spoke up at the neighborhood meeting as well. I believe if it's the same Wendy? woman, she lives on Earl Street on the opposite side, on the northerly side of Earl, not All on right. the side of the. Wendy, if you could give us your full name and address, please, for the record. Uh, yes, um, Wendy Bellevue, B-E-L-L-E-V-U-E. -L -L -E -E. I'm on 51 Earl Street. Um, the, the, um, I'm here because my aunt can't be here right now. She's at work, so she asked me to, to uh, fill in for her. And we just a uh, question on the building that's being built here because there's a lady next door that came over and, and was, and this is our first meeting with you guys. And, and um, because the lady next door was saying that she was very adamant about not having it be built, whatever it is. Because she said that um, what's going to happen is you guys are going to build like, you know, like some tall, multi-level, in low-income housing building that's going to reach all the way down to Prospect Street and no, cut I down think... all the trees or something. Like, I don't really know what she was yeah. trying to tell us. That's why right. I came to the meeting and get more information from you guys. Is it in an apartment complex or is it a house that's been well, these, these are, this, is, this is a single single family residential development, ma'am. Single family residential development. Oh, okay. So so it's not gonna be like there's not gonna be a, a street. The only street that we have that's accessed down the road is gonna be the one that's um like the Earl Street um across um that connects to Cross Street, right? It's not she there's not gonna be like a road that's gonna be coming out of nowhere that connects to Prospect Street from Earl Street, right? Uh, no, actually, Bob, if I could answer the woman's uh, question. Please, yeah, go ahead, Bill. Yeah, you know, Earl Street is not, uh, we're not, we're not disturbing any access to, we're not proposing any access to, from our oh, division uh, over to Earl Street. And uh, in fact, that's why one of the reasons we didn't uh, uh, extend Augusta Ave uh, all the way from where it is now to the, to the section where Angela Terrace starts on that first sheet. Uh, knowing that we didn't want to have any effect on the existing houses on those three streets. Uh, and, and, and that's why we had to, we, we chose to just open up the cross Ave and make that for the circulation. 
But uh, as I explained to the woman, uh, maybe that was her your neighbor as well, but uh, that they were actually on the opposite side of the street than from the division and that there was no impact at all from us. And they are single family, uh, hopefully four bedroom, some well, most uh, hopefully with a two car garage. It'd be very, they're gonna be very nice homes. Uh, hope, hopefully be the nice colonials and uh, it'll really provide a, a, a market uh, for hopefully the economy stays up where it is. Now. Nice, okay, um, okay, that sounds good. Um, so I, I, I'm for, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm for it. My, um, especially my aunt who owns this house who wanted me to, to also come to a meeting and say that she's also for it. She's uh, uh, agrees or um, pro the plan. I don't know what the official term is, but we're for it, build the house. Right, thank you, thank, <laughs> thank you, you for your input. Is there anybody thank else who would like to speak in favor? Is there anyone else, <clears throat> excuse me, is there anyone else that would like to speak in opposition to the project? Uh, Mr. Chairman, there was a comment uh, from a Philip uh, Dickus, I'm sorry, from uh, 172 Augusta Ave uh, extension, and I believe he is still on. Uh, he is unmuted, and if he would like to uh, provide his testimony, we would appreciate that. Can you bring that page up? Is that possible to bring that location up on the screen, uh, Rob? One uh, sheet four, Rob. Sheet four, thank you, sir. And I'm not sure where 172 Augusta is. Yeah, 170. 170. Is he asking me if he's at the end of the road? Um, oh, it is 170 Augusta. He is typing. Phil, if you'd like to speak with us, you can, you're, you are unmuted or you can unmute yourself. Sir, you, uh, are you able to hear the proceedings of the meeting? Um, Robert, uh, Mr. Chairman, this is Shirley Azak. Actually, uh, Philip came up after the meeting that we had the butters meeting a few weeks ago at North Middle School, yeah. and his his comment was that he spoke with um, Mr. Self and um, that they came. Mr. Self, uh, the engineer, stated that he would put in some sort of a stockade fence be behind the homes um, for privacy. So that's, I think he just wanted to go on the record to make sure that that, that was in the, um, that that was a stipulation there and that they came to an agreement. So um, Bill, I don't know, you know, I, he, he stated that he spoke to you and that was an agreement that you and him um, came upon. And that's what his comment says in the chat. Uh, he did come up to me after the meeting and stated the same thing. So I think he just wants to go on the record, um, you know, that this was stated. Did you, did you already address that, Bill? Yeah, that's what I I believe that's the individual that I did talk uh, at the uh, at the end of the meeting. Uh, thank you very much, Shirley. Uh, and I, that, you know, that was one of the concerns. And, and I'm sure that the other neighbors down along probably have the same. Uh, that that it, it would be something that we would propose uh, to put the stockade down along those five houses for the length of that uh, that uh, back line of their back line and the rear line of the newer lots uh, coming off of Cross Ave up at the top. We would uh, also uh, be willing to include that as a stipulation to any variance uh, determination mm -hmm. by the Board of Appeals. All right, so noted. Mr. Chairman, Fred from 158 Augusta would like to speak. Okay. Fred, the floor is yours. I'm sorry, he typed a note. Hello? Hello? Hello, Fred, go ahead. Uh, yes, my name is Frederick Coleman. 
at uh, 158 Augusta Avenue Extension. And um, my house is behind lot seven. And um, I hear you guys talking about swells and water and everything. But I just wanted to be um, quite clear that I had never gotten water. We had never gotten water in our basement since we've been here. And what you, what you guys are talking about now is very concerning to me. When you're talking about behind lot seven, which is right behind my house, when you're talking about swells and water and drainage and problems and stuff like that. And um, I'm really concerned about coming home one day after a rainstorm and I, my house is, the basement is flooded. I do have, my basement is a livable basement. We do have furniture, we have TVs and everything down there, AC units, and um, and that's what I'm concerned about. And I don't know how you guys, could, once, if this was to happen, it would be man-made. And I don't understand and how would that affect me and how would I be able to replace this and who do I have to come to to get it fixed? All right, well, we, Bill, for the record, is that, is this gentleman on plot? Um, is, I'm, is I'm, I'm at 158. It's and plot 11, Bob. Plot 11. Map Augusta. 37. Well, map 37, plot 11. Okay. Well, the, I mean, you can explain it, uh, Bill, but the, the, obviously the purpose of establishing the swale is to intercept to any sheet flow that's heading his way. In a nutshell, that's what you're doing. Yeah, and sheet 5D is a, is a clearer picture of that lot seven, yeah, Bob. That's what, that's what I'm open to. Bill, if you'd like me to jump in. Please, Todd, yeah. Hey, Todd Pilling, I'm the engineer that uh, did the drainage um, layout for this. Um, so what we're putting in behind these houses is a we, we call it a swale. Another word for it is a channel or a ditch. We, we call it a swale because it's going to be a grass lined, but we're digging down approximately two feet down from the existing grade in order to catch the, any and intercept any water that's flowing off of the backs of these lots off the, of the new houses and diverting it into our drainage system. So no water will be going over the property line into these properties on Augusta Ave extension. Okay, so you guys, what are you guys going to do with the drainage? Are you going to widen the drainage or because it's going to be even more water once you do that, right? No, this is just an interceptor trench that's going to take the water that's running across the surface and divert it yep. into our drainage basin that's a few hundred feet um, down Augusta out from you. Okay. Uh, down to where the end of the uh, pavement ends on Augusta Ave, that's approximately where the drainage basin is going to be. So we're taking any water that would normally head toward your property and we're sending it all down into that drainage basin. And you guys sure 100% this is going to work? It would be almost impossible for water that is running across the ground to jump up a two foot. Oh, I, I, I don't know. I mean, yeah, yeah. So it, 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 things happen, you know. Yep. So um, it, it, that's why we're cutting into the ground like two feet. We're not just making a little three inch swale here that's going to get filled up with grass and overflow. We're making something two feet deep that can catch any water. And even if there's leaves in there or the grass starts growing you, and trees grow in it, it can still channel the water away. Okay. And another thing I have during this, um, the process of digging up the rodents, are, are you guys going to be putting down anything to, to, for the rodents, the rats, and, uh, and stuff like that during this period of uh, construction? Where, where, are they, where is there a pest problem, sir? Where, where have you recognized a pest problem? No, uh, there's no pest problem now, but I'm saying once you start digging up the dirt, once the, once the trees and stuff coming down, I'm pretty sure there's, there's Rodents back there. I don't know. Well, doesn't that happen though when you in construction? I mean, you you're going to get. I mean, you're going to get squirrels or maybe small 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 animals that, that are going to be displaced, but they they'll relocate in the wild somewhere. They always do. Yeah. 
No, I'm, well, I'm just talking about rats. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. Well, that's well, why mouse, I asked the question. Did you recognize the rat problem there? Is there a problem? No, not at the moment, no. If, if I could jump in, Bob, on this. At all. Please. Uh, you know, we're not, in, in any construction site, it's hard to predict what would happen with uh, anything that's in natural state. But we're, we're, we're thinking this, this to be rats, uh, I don't see anything that would supply food for rats. Normally, they'll, you'll see those, they're more around, you know, garbage uh, bins or trash barrels, things like that. But we're, we're, what we're disturbing is, uh, you might see some, a couple of coyotes run by your house. Uh, we, they, they've been running by me out there. So uh, other than that, we don't anticipate, but you know, you know any situation arises, it will be taken care of whatever, whatever's needed, uh, certainly by the contractors that are doing the work. Okay. Or it can certainly be addressed and the gentleman can, can contact the Board of Health and to be able to contact the, uh, the uh, contractor and the owner and the board, whatever, whatever, be, you know, if there, if there becomes some kind of a problem, I don't anticipate it. There's nothing out there okay. to, to, uh, to feed that community uh, of rodents that we see. Yeah. Okay. Does that, does that address your concerns? Sir? Well, I'm not saying I'm for it and I'm not against it either, but I'm not, <laughs> it's right. not I, I don't well, think it's- don't have to be, if we appreciate uh, your concerns. <laughs> But I'm just I'm just concerned about my neighborhood. That's all where I live. Yeah, we appreciate your input. Um, does Thank that, does that you. complete your Does that complete your question, sir? Uh, I believe so. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank right. you. Is, is there anybody else that would like to speak in favor? Uh, is there anybody else that would like to speak in opposition to the project? This is Denise Cahill. I would like to ask a few questions. Please, yeah, identify yourself, Denise Cahill. Hey, yes. What's your location, please? Uh, Denise Cahill at 148 Augusta Ave Extension. Could you bring that sheet up, Rob, please? I don't uh, know uh, I'm what, right what's next to Fred. Um, map 37, plot 10. Sheet 4, Rob. D4? Sheet uh, 4. Just sheet 4. Let's go to sheet 4. Talk amongst yourself. <laughs> well, what, before while he's doing that, I would just like to take this time to uh, thank Mr. May and the planning department, the Mr. Chairman, the board members, taking the time and letting us um, ask these questions. I think it's important that this is the process and that we're allowed to do this. So thank you. Thank you for Ms. your. Cahill, what's your lot and plot number? It is map thirty-seven, plot ten. Right next, next, well, right next door. Okay. Yep. Right here. Just um, for clarification, right? The subdivision rules and regulations say that the road should not be longer than 700 feet. How long is this road? Did someone? Uh, I think you addressed that already, Bill. Yeah. The. Uh, the extension, the dead end st extension would be with 874.6 feet. Okay, so approximately 174 feet longer than what the rules allow. But uh, Rob, uh, actually the, the roadway itself, that distance is from Cross Ave that, uh, that ties on to the existing Cross Ave. So it, that's actually from across Augusta Ave. We, we, we show that as the oh. street coming up. So it's, it's closer to probably, probably uh, uh, it's probably seven, seven or just very close to 700 feet. But you look, have asked for a waiver from that, correct? Yes, he has. Yeah, you've asked for a waiver. You listed that as one of your waivers. That's yes, correct, he has. yeah. Okay, um, my next one is in the rules and regs, right, it says that it talks about trees, um, and that trees six inches over in diameter, measuring four feet above the finished ground level, should be preserved. And then in the O and M plan, it also states that they're supposed to be delineated. The existing trees to remain should be clearly delineated. 
Will that be happening prior to construction? Um, he has the right to wait. Ask, that's another regulation that he has the right to wait. What is the what is the so what is the minimum uh, tree size that needs to be uh, located on the plan? Is it eight inch diameter? The, the rules and regulations say six inches. Six inches, sir. Yeah. Measured four feet from a ground from ground level. And that's also in your, well, your O&M plan, right, states that they're supposed to be delineated before the trees that are to be saved are to be delineated. Wow. Hmm. So is that a no, that that will not be happening? Well, that's up to the applicant. He has the right to, he has the right to ask that that, uh, for a waiver of that. Uh, is it really densely wooded there, uh, Bill? This, this portions of it, again, it looks like it's been basically a construction site for, for 60 years. It's, it's more piles of, uh, of, there's piles of loom, piles of uh, dirt, you know, there's, uh, I, I, I don't would know have if to there's any large you, native sir. trees. It looks like it was probably all treed at one time. Yeah. Again, any of the native trees that are out there, the larger trees that we can save, they're probably going to be mostly on the outskirts of the lots for, you know, for buffers on the <clears> outsides. <throat> But uh, uh, did, you, uh, did you have a particular concern relative to the trees, ma'am? Yeah, I just don't want them taken down. They don't have to be. Well, generally in construction, I mean, there's going to be tree disturbance. There's going to be tree disturbance for the roadway. There's going to be tree disturbance. Yes, no, I, un I understand that. I for, each, for each home site, um, I guess that's up to the contractors. We don't have, to my knowledge, a regulation that says that we have to maintain um, a certain percentage of the original trees. I mean, I, no. I'm a big no, I did fan not see where you had to keep percentage. That's correct. Yeah. But I would, I, I mean, I've been in this house for 22 years. And as far as like a construction site, this has been no activity out behind me in 22 years. So it's not, you know, sand, dirt, whatever has not been dumped there recently. It's been yeah. like that for 22 years and probably longer. Do you have a, I mean, not that you need to disclose one at this time, uh, Mr. McCluskey, do you have a developer in mind for the project? Is it, is that something that we could, a concern that we could pass on to the developer? Uh, I know there have been some interested parties. Uh, really, the, 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 the question is uh, for any developer is what's going to be allowed and what are, what are going to be the restrictions? Obviously that, you know, plays into the cost. Of, any, of, of anything, I, I will tell you, um, I have a client who has developed several properties uh, very successfully in Brockton over the years, uh, is well received by the city and, and does what he <coughs> says he's gonna do. I don't think I'm at liberty to, where it's so preliminary, I don't, I don't mm -hmm. think I should yeah, mention that's, it. Yeah, that's, that's fair. fair. That's All right, fair. thank you. All right. Uh, thank you. Um, the grass swale, which we really talked about at length, um, I've kind of heard the conversation go back and forth. There will be an easement created for that. Is that what I was hearing? Yes, yes there's an easement that's shown on the plan, a 30 foot wide as required by the city. Right. Yep. And that easement will be put into these lots as I swain it, a drain swale easement? Yes, that's the, uh, as shown on the plan. Okay, thank you. Um, you talk about it being their backyards. I've been around enough construction that people tend to use the drainage swale for their dumping grounds for their leaves and their grass clippings. And we've all seen it. So yeah, just to make sure that that easement is on the property so they know that they cannot do that. That would be appreciated. The, uh, another variance, the sidewalks, the rules and regs require an eight foot sidewalk and you're asking for a five foot, is that correct? I don't believe we ask for, mm. we require a five foot wide sidewalk, both sides. I believe it's five foot Bob with three foot grass strip in, in, uh, in some cases. Yeah, the grass. But it's, a, it's, a, it's a five foot sidewalk. But the actual walk is five feet both sides. You're gonna wave what? You're waving one sidewalk, Bill? 
uh, in actuality, look at, we, we know that uh, it's, uh, we're asking for, you know, really, especially through the Board of Appeals, uh, we certainly didn't, we didn't minimize uh, uh, what we're going to build for the road. We expect that to, we expect it to be a very, uh, very nice subdivision. If they build a ni nice homes like they have been building in the city, uh, we've proposed sidewalks both sides. Uh, if you'll notice that we have lotting uh, that would need access from both sides. So uh, in this particular case, uh, to allow for sidewalk on the other side, I think is a small cost, overall cost. Uh, to you know, if the boards uh, find that they'd allow us to have, you know, you know the uh, the X number of lots that we're asking for, so sure. we don't we're not anticipating any waivers for you know roadway construction as far as myths and and things like that, granite curb sidewalks they're all proposed. All right, thank you. <clears throat> any other concerns, Ms. Cahill? Yes, I'm just getting started. <laughs> um, they are looking for a uh, for a variance for the drainage, right? Which I did a rough calculation that forty six percent, roughly approximate, right? Approximate forty six percent of their drainage less than the required four foot coverage. Maybe you could address that, please. You've got some proposed drainage that has less than minimum cover. Approximately 48% of it. Todd, if you could address Todd that. Todd is Todd. muted. Yep, sorry. Did you hear that comment, Todd? I did. Um, so the limitations that we have out here with trying to tie into the existing drainage system with our overflows and uh, it, I didn't think it was quite 46%, but um, the areas that we were needing the waivers from is in order to keep the pipes up off the bottom of the basin, when they enter our big drainage basin, so that the, when the basin starts filling with water, that it doesn't start surcharging the pipes and going back up into the drainage system. Uh, these basins, we're trying to keep them as shallow as we possibly can. And as we came down the hill, we generally did okay with them. But as we get closer to the drainage basin, we, again, we wanted to stay above grade. I'm, I'm scanning through the plans now, trying to see what areas we're talking about. Um, I think the other one is at the intersection of Augusta and Cross Ave, where, again, we're trying to fit some existing drainage structures and existing roadway grades and get them into our drainage basin and still have it function and overflow into the drainage system. So that was the reason for it. Um, but we are using the, the heavier pipe, which can withstand lower cover over the pipe. Yeah, using the heavier grade, heavier grade pipe. How, how much, how much uh, short or, or, or deficient, how, de how much on average, if there is an average, how, de how much deficient are you with the minimum cover type? Uh, I'm scanning through now. Um, I think, I, I think it was like three feet is what we were at. Um, I think there was like maybe one drain line that was less, I, I'd have to, um, I, I'm going to need a few minutes to figure that out, but, um, that's all right. I just didn't know. Looks like the lowest one here looks like about three feet. But the most important thing is that the, is that the, for the, for the class of pipe that you, that you've designed, uh, the analysis, the load analysis for that is adequate for what you as you can show, you can show calculations that you've shown uh, design standards that uh, comply with your with the cover that you're providing. Yeah, well, the, the 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 regular concrete drain pipe that's in most towns, three feet of cover is is what's needed. Brockton requires the extra foot of cover over their pipe, so um, I'm pretty sure. I'm I'm again, I'm checking through now. Um, I know there are also the, the engineer, the city engineer, had commented on some of this stuff too. So. Um, yeah, if I can uh, uh, intervene here, uh, Bob, I, I think most of all the drainage is three and a half feet cover. I think it was just a couple of lines, Todd, wasn't it? That down near the intersection where we're tying in the, in the existing, uh, we, were, we were actually bringing up the existing grade of the uh, Augusta Rav a little bit to, to give us that cover, but the, that's where you, the heavier pipes would go, the more, more reinforced. Yeah, but I think overall, we, you know, we had a minimum of at least a three, uh, three and a half feet. 
with a heavier class pipe. All right. Uh, I have a comment, uh, Ms. Cahill? Yes, please. Thank you. Um, street trees, right? Per the rules and regs, they're supposed to be in the grass strip. And if you look at the plans, um, there is a detail for the street trees. But if you look at the cross, the street cross section and the sidewalk cross section does not show the street trees. And if you look at the plans, the street trees are showed on the property, the personal property. And I just want to kind of double check on that because if the trees go on people's personal property, they have the right to cut those down. Where if they're in the easement, if they do, they're not supposed to. <laughs> are you are you going? So is it your proposal um, to to add the street trees as part? You said you're going to follow you know the regulation. Uh, as yeah, most the, the you know, as you say, as you see on the uh, on the plans, you can see that we're. We're trying to, you know, keep them back at least three or four feet from the sidewalk. You know, over the years, you know, trees, a lot of people, you know, we plant the trees, but in six, seven, eight, ten years, they start ripping up your sidewalk. So uh, we planted them, uh, you know, back a little bit. Uh, what we could do, Bob, uh, I'm, I'm sure we need to come back to the planning board for final review after the Board of Appeals. Uh, what we could do for the, even for the Board of Appeals, we could, we could show a 10 foot tree uh, easement uh, along both sides. That's really our intent is to, is to keep those in there. A lot of times the utility company, especially electrical ask for an easement there too. So we can make it a tree planting and utility easement or whatever, so. Yeah. And she said you, you, you need to show, you just need to show a typical tree on your cross section or something. Well, there's a typical section there. Normally you just, uh, <coughs> Yeah, the trees don't show up on that, but we can add it to it. That's not a problem. Okay. If, will you should will you add the ten foot tree easement on the plan also? Oh, if you if you notice on sheet eleven, Bob, the details she we show the, uh, you know, the typical deciduous uh, tree, uh, uh, tree planting detail. You do basically. Yes. <laughs> that's what we're trying to uh, you know we'll accomplish that again. We. A lot of them, they'll put them right up next to the back edge of the sidewalk, and it doesn't take long uh, for them to start tearing up the uh, backs of the sidewalks, you know, through root expansion. It's very true. Okay. Um, okay. Um, and I need a little help with this also in that I do believe, I thought per your specs, that the required frontage is 175 feet. The required what, I'm sorry? Is 175 feet. The frontage. Correct. The frontage, okay. Yep. And when Mr. Self was speaking, has have they already gone to the zoning board? Has he already got it approved as 125? Did I? No, I believe his next step is to the zoning board. Okay, so given that, right, again, through my calculations, I don't show one lot that meets the zoning board requirements. He, he's, going to, he's going to go to the zoning board of appeals with his client and they're going to ask relief from uh, zoning, the zoning requirements as needed. He's going, that's his next step. That's his right to do that. Okay, thank you. Um, I do have, I have questions where the existing Augusta Ave extension meets like the wooded area that it appears that that wooded area will like where Cross Ave, um, uh, what am I trying to say? The intersection of Augusta and Cross. Thank you. Yes, Augusta and Cross Ave. The portion like the, the where the private meets the public Uh, what page would that be? Probably sheet five, uh, five C, Bob. No, it's not really showing on five C either. It doesn't show very well. No. On five C. She said where the public meets the private. Are you talking Augusta Rev? 
Yes. Where it got the stop. All right. If you look at sheet five, uh, it's actually 5A and 5B. If you look at 5B, I believe, at the very end, uh, Rob, uh, Right Mrs. Yeah. See that if you look at Augusta Rav, uh, down right at the bottom where the swale come out came out, uh, go up, you can right, see yeah. that one it stops here. Augusta Rav is public, uh, where it goes out, I believe it's Angela Terrace. Yes, uh, from, from that point, that's where it, it uh, it's it's been accepted from that, that point out to the back of the property lines over at Earl Street as a public by the city. From uh, that point all the way out, Augusta Rav to Prospect Street, it's a private way. So my question is that is currently a wooded area. Correct. Will that area be cleared? No, nothing. Again, one of the reasons we, we didn't, uh, we didn't uh, in, you know, tie the two in uh, is that we wanted to leave that. We didn't want that being a thoroughfare from Prospect to be able to come down to Angela, uh, I think it's Kasari and uh, one other street there. Uh, we, we purposely, that's what we recommended that we open up Cross Ave, uh, and then it would just be right through the intersection straight for the, the Cross Ave extension people to get the cross, cross street to be able to go north and easterly without having to go all the way down to Prospect and come back up to Cross and then turning northerly on Cross from Prospect. So, no, yeah, from there to the intersection that's already paved now that you know uh, on the ground, there is not to be any disturbance other than just, uh, you know, a, a small gravel, uh, a 10 foot gravel uh, path well, around the detention area for maintenance. Okay, thank you. So none of that area will be disturbed. Correct. So, so uh, the there'll be right. some grading in it, but it, it'll be minimal grading just to, uh, to meet the, what you see in the plan. But there, there's, there's not going to be a, uh, an effort. To, there's, there'll be no through traffic, either pedestrian or, or, uh, or vehicle, certainly no vehicle traffic. It'll be remained, uh, it'll, it'll remain the woods. Well, if, if I may just add to that, we are tying in from that grass swale, a drain pipe into the drain manhole there. So we are going to have to be doing some construction to tie in the overflow. Right, right, right. just construction. Swale. Well, and I thought, I thought I saw a plan that had the contractor's lay down area was in that spot. Well, that's a, that's a temporary, that's a temporary uh, under the erosion control. And that's a temporary space, you know, uh, right near where the, the house on lot three would be built. But as, as part of the rig, uh, as part of the uh, so as the part of the erosion control, that's where all the uh, construction trailer would be parked. Uh, check in. There'd be a small parking gravel parking area. Uh, right, once I, that's, I, once the project is completed, that'll be removed and and uh, it'll be you know turned back into a lawn probably and or you know some plantings in there. But it's a it's a temporary situation under the erosion control. Okay, thank you. I think this question was answered early as far as the, the construction vehicles entering and exiting the site. You had talked about leaving the guardrail up on Cross Ave extension across Ave. So I assume mm -hmm. coming in from Prospect Street. Yes, that, that's correct. That, that was under the recommendation of the uh, original review for the uh, deputy chief, fire chief. Uh, and we, we certainly wanted to, uh, we agree in a hundred percent that during the construction phasing until the houses were, were built and starting to be sold on Augusta Ave that it would remain closed basically to allow the infrastructure for the, the street cross Ave extension up to the cul-de-sac to be built. That's where you get most of your heavy, you know, truck uh, you know, traffic and bringing in material and taking out material for, for building that road, that part of the roadway. So. All those vehicles will be uh, under the construction phase will be sent out to Prospect Street. Did you have anything else on this, Gail? Could you tell me, um, I, I'm sure this would be for Mr. Pilling, what, is, what was the di design cr criteria for the infiltration basin? Uh, 10-year storm, 12-year storm, what? Oh, um, yeah, we designed for a 100-year storm. 100 years? 
Thank you. That's required by the Brockton regulations. That's what, just asking. And Mrs. Cahill, I just want to say you've been very thorough with your review of these plans. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's my job. Yeah. Um, or make sure you're on your toes. Oh. Mm. Uh, has any has there ever been discussions about a fence around the basin to prevent somebody from on previous projects I've been on they've been required to put a fence to prevent children from possibly falling into a basin that might well, help if I can uh, if I can jump in there Bob uh, oh, go ahead. What, what happens that if you looked at the basin on uh, on uh, sheet 5b uh, Bob uh, Yep. You'll notice that these things, these basins are designed to really only hold back water on a on a, a certain rainstorm event. They they fill up <coughs> according to that type of an event, but in all actuality, they are designed to end up to drain free, so that you know there's there it'll be a grass uh, it, that's actually going to be a grass basin. Uh, it'll be mowed, it'll be planted grass, you know, seed will be planted in there. It's only in a certain rainstorm events that it's designed to hold back the water coming off the street drainage and allow it to, to fill up there so it doesn't overtax any drainage coming into the existing drain pipes that are in Augusta Ave. So it's, it's yep. even though it's a, it's a, it's a, it may appear to be a hole in the ground, it's designed for temporary storage of, uh, of water. Can I jump in for just a second, Mrs. Chairman? Yeah. That is something that uh, it is in our regulations for some strange reason that we have uh, six foot fencing around these places. And uh, uh, basically the, the fences then prevent the areas from being maintained. And we, what we're building are, are, are prisons for water. Um, and, you know, it, it catches garbage and, and all sorts of things. Because these are retention ponds, or detention ponds and not retention ponds, pardon me for that, um, the water does drain out almost within hours after the storm. And um, there's not going to be large amounts of ponding that could become uh, problems for um, folks. But uh, if, if you look, um, all of our natural ponds across the city um, don't have any fencing around them. And uh, we don't seem to have problems with um, uh, children in those ponds. So what I would, in the future, I would like the board to take a look at those design guidelines um, to remove that requirement. That's a good idea. You're going to find that most communities now have done away with fencing of detention, of detention and retention basins. That's a, it's become a thing of the past. Okay, thank you. And um, the basin itself, I, I've talked about this a year ago when we were at the meeting. Does the city maintain the basin at the time of completion, project completion? Can I answer that? Maybe. Um, we have a new stormwater ordinance uh, and we are waiting for some guidance from the city engineer and the uh, director of public works to discuss how that operates. It's my understanding that in the future, the stormwater systems are going to become managed by the city. Uh, right now, most of the stormwater systems are, are managed by homeowners associations or worse, are left to neglect uh, and just kind of abandoned. So um, we will have to get back to you on that. If we don't maintain it, then it certainly would be a homeowners association. But right now it looks like the, through the stormwater ordinance that the city would be taking over some responsibility. But we will know more when we come back as a definitive subdivision. So there's gonna be another public hearing at the planning board um, where we can have an answer for that, I hope. Okay, thank you. And just 
just I just want to reiterate what Fred and Joanna had expressed, right? I've been in here for 22 years and I have had water in my basement three times. And that's when the whole city was flooded. So I just want that on record, right? That I don't have a water problem at this house. Very good. And thank you all for your time. Um, will we be notified when this goes to the zoning board? If you're within the radius of notice, um, I think they're also they also advertise in the in the in the newspaper. I don't know if you get the Enterprise, but if you're within the radius of notice, you'll get it. You'll get a, a legal notice in the mail. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Is if there anybody else? She received this notification. She would have. She'll receive the zoning notification. Is she re the actual notification from Bill? Yes. Okay. I just went, I wasn't sure if they had to send out about his notifications. Also. Yeah, they will. They will. Same Thank list. You. All right. Yeah, Is there just, anybody else who would like to go on record with comments? Very good. Um, well, we you let's see. You've heard the. I guess you've heard the, the comments of the uh, the engineering department and of the uh, planning department. You've heard the comments um, of the abutters and so forth. So there's a couple of things, little housekeeping things you've got to do there. I think you said you're going to meet you're going to uh, meet with TK, and then uh, yeah, if I can uh, answer that, Bob. Yeah, okay. what what. Uh, well, hopefully that uh, if Jaki, I'd like to you know, get a hold of Jaki and see if he has any other concerns over and above what we had the original. And I'll certainly address all those when we come back, uh, hopefully successful with the Board of Appeals, uh, that any of their concerns we could incorporate. But more importantly, I'll make sure that Jaki, I meet with Jaki and make sure we uh, address any of his uh, concerns either, either now or in the future coming up. Did you want to, did you want to resolve that issue of the because again, that was his request for the additional 10 foot wide uh, easement, maintenance easement there. Did you want to resolve that first? Yeah. Well, yeah, well, that's one of the issues where I'll discuss with him. Uh, and you know, again, you can, you can see by the plans that it, it's, we don't consider these really a, as a drainage swale per se. It's more of an, just a, 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 you know, just an avenue of making sure that uh, we can intercept water that's over coming over over uh, overland to the abutting properties. Okay. There are, the only structures that would need maintenance really certainly are going to be down at the uh, outfall, and or uh, you know 10, 20, 30 feet from that, which is easily accessible uh, from the road that's already proposed around the detention uh, retention basin, and that that's something I'll sit down and go over with Chiquillas and you know and just uh, see what his thoughts are on that. All right. uh, again, you know, we're going to, you know, hopefully we'll be able to come back in front of the board. Uh, so all of those, all of those comments and all those notes will be incorporated. Hopefully we'll, uh, we'll have all the, uh, you know, any, any, any points now in future of all answered in that return. So is this the plan that's before us tonight for clarity? Is this a definitive subdivision or a preliminary? Well, you know, we're actually, uh, because we were, we were kind of caught in the switch uh, from, Board of Appeals first into the planning board. So we were always used to going to the Board of Appeals first and then incorporating that those input into the final definitive plans. Right. Even though our, our plans, we try to be as thorough as possible to answer all questions on both boards. But we're, 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 we're tossed up as uh, far as the procedure. Uh, you know, we've just switched into whatever the city has mandated, you know, we go through. Uh, so it's it's whatever we can, it, whatever the board wants to interpret it as, I believe, uh, we'd like to be able to get its blessing go to the Board of Appeals. You know, we still need to, you know, apply under the under the board of under the variance uh, variance that we request for the Board of Appeals. It, it was applied as it was filed as a definitive. Yes. Okay. But but the, in that case, as has as been the planning board's rule. If there's changes to the plan, that's why that's why I'm asking for clarification on that question. Mm -hmm. If there's if there's necessary things that are going to be changed on the plan, and uh, we, we, we uh, I, correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. May, do we need to see any changes or revisions on the plan prior to acting on the plan? We've gotten in, we've gotten into a little jam by doing that before. I, I think that the Chike engineering issues need to be worked out and and it would make sense to um continue 
continue, but I, I think that we have enough here that they can proceed to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, the engineering, to. the engineering issues, the easement issues, are are shouldn't hold up the ZBA decision. I agree. So I like that. If that's if that's allows them an avenue to to proceed, um, then we could what we could do is we could give a recommendation to go forward to the zoning board, and yet but yet not give a definitive approval because there's other two small. I mean we've covered a lot of ground. Uh, there's a lot of things that have been ironed out, which is which is good for everybody. But you can see there's a few loose ends there. So if that's if I'm if I'm on the right uh, um, thought process yeah. here, if we, can, I, if we can, I would like to nail those loose ends down before you give a final final approval. As but would I. We've gotten into. I, a, I say continue this. Past and but, just come back to bite us. So, but, but can we allow give, them to go to zoning? Can we give them a a uh, we can certainly give them a recommendation to go forward to the zoning board, can't we? Yes. We're certainly with what they've got here, this is all we're down to now is housekeeping issues. I think you can do that. It's, it's, <clears throat> is there, I don't think there's any sort of rule etched in stone as to what's actually required to go to the Board of Appeals other than we come to the planning board. I think it's sort of been decided it's a preliminary, but but I think a letter to the board would suffice. I Can I make so a too. motion to um, continue with a positive recommendation to ZBA? I like your wording. I'll second that motion. All right, so we've got a, we've got a motion to continue the definitive definitive subdivision hearing with the planning board, and and at the same time, there's been a recommendation, a motion to advance to the applicant. Um, a, 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 an endorsement to go to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Are we, are we good with that recommendation, with that, with that uh, motion? Mm -hmm. um, when do you want to continue to? When would you like to continue to sub the definitive subdivision hearing? Well, if I could answer, uh, Bob, it, it, would it be, would it be best, uh, best interest all around? We'd like to go to the Board of Appeals. When you say to be continued, we we know we we just in, always anticipated coming back uh, before yeah. there was any approval under the under the definitive subdivision submittal. Yeah. Uh, what do we say the three months action? Could we what come we back do three, uh, three, three, after three months the and from the board of appeals? How about three months. About three time months, time. but yeah, I think January, January would be good. January, he's recommending January. That's fine with us. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 it would depend on the length that we'd, we'd, we'd be in uh, going through the Board of Appeals, which is, that's, 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 that's fine with us. Whatever the Board uh, 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 recommends, that's good. All right, so can you incorporate that? I guess you can incorporate that into the, into the motion. Was there, was there a second on the motion? I believe there was from Reggie. Reggie, Reggie, okay, second from Reggie. Okay, so if there's no other discussion, Pam, are we good? Uh, Mr. McCluskey. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for a letter freezing the time clock through January. I understand through this whole COVID thing, we're technically frozen anyway. However, uh, we, we would waive. Uh, our we office likes us to just get that in writing. Yep. We'll waive. You can wave <laughs> it in, could you wave it in an email to me? <laughs> John, I'll uh, I'll uh, I have the form. I'll uh, I'll fill it out and send it to you, and uh, we'll have Freddie sign it. And yes, Pam, it'll be in your desk. Okay, thank you. Okay, thanks. Okay, uh, if there's no, if we're, I guess if we're all good and there's no other commentary, uh, roll call by vote. Uh, Craig Pina, yes. Reggie Thomas, yes. Tony Gonzalez, yes. Larry Hassan, yes. Bob Palazzi is a yes. So it looks like you're on, on to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Well, we want to thank, thank the board very much uh, and uh, all the input that we got as well. So yes, thank you very much. Uh, looking much forward to it. And thank you for a, a very thorough um, set of plans and a very thorough uh, presentation on, on, the, uh, on the subdivision. It's not an easy subdivision. It's, it, has, it has its complications. So thank you for your input. Uh, thank I, you. I also think that uh, Ms. Cahill has a, um, a future in site plan review. 
I was, I, I, I don't know. Do we have any openings on the planning board? That was thorough as all get out. Yeah. Well. All yeah, right. Very, very impressed. Yes. Thanks. Good night. Okay. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you very much. Right. Thank you. Board members. Thank you. Yes, and, and planning board members, the, la the last two, the, the last two agenda items, as we as we have said, uh, seven uh, six seventy eight E Street has been continued, and plot two Belgravia has been continued. So, uh, Mr. May, you were about to say something. Oh, I was going to say, don't don't the board members don't hang up until you guys uh, move to adjourn, please. All right, move to adjourn. Wait a minute, is there any, we do, is, is there any other, Pam, any other business? You don't have any, any administrative stuff? Um, there is one plan on my desk that needs signature. It's an old subdivision plan, really old, that wasn't signed. So if you guys can stop in, that's it. No okay. one can. Is it, is it, what'd you say, is it a definitive subdivision or is it an e &R? The definitive subdivision. How many signatures? From a year ago. Remember that one where the house was like two inches to the lot line? Oh my God. That, uh, oh God. Well, they never. All right. So you need signatures. I got it. Anything else? It. <laughs> no. I need no. All right. Motion to adjourn. Second. I, All I second it. Very Bye. Good. See you tomorrow, Pam. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Thank you all for participating. Uh -huh. Everyone have a good night. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.